If you've ever wanted to build a blog without having to constantly edit your code in order to update your blog posts and videos for you, that can be very stressful. So today's video, we're going to be building a blog using Next.js, TypeScript, Tailwind CSS for our styling, Feral Motions for interesting animations here and there, and Sanity CMS. So Sanity CMS, and by CMS, I mean Content Management System. So Sanity CMS is the endless CMS that you know enables us to have control over our content and we as front-end developers we're going to create a nice UI and we're going to fetch our content that's our data and render it on our front end. Okay, so those are some key things you're going to learn how to do in this video. And at the end of the video, we're going to deploy it. Okay. I'm going to walk you through all the process, so just stay relaxed, all right? So let's get started. Hello, lovely people. So I'm going to show you a quick demo of what today's tutorial is going to be about. We're going to start off with the navigation bar, and then we're going to move to the banner. We're going to learn how to make this type in effect using React Typewriter. Then we're going to um, render, you know, our programming post and mental output post. What I did here was to break it down into various, like you can, the whole aim is that you get to be dynamic about what you're doing. So you can have a number of categories on your blog. So yeah, I gave an example of programming mental output. You could have more. All right, so yeah, we're just rendering our recent post based on the categories that we have, and then we also have a simple um footer with our various social links, and then we're going to add this copyright here where I'm going to teach you how to make this copyright dynamic. Moving on, we're going to let go to the programming section. Yeah, you can render all your posts, and you also have a subscription button here. All right, and the subscription here we can just use. Um, for example, I already, I already have used that one re registered. So if I put subscribe, it's going to tell me you already subscribed. So let's try something user2 at gmail.com. So you can see here that it's going to tell you thank you for subscribing. Um, we also we can you know move on to a post, and from that post, we're going to be able to comments so we have added various uh, added a number of comments here so um new comments yeah so i can submit that and very interesting we can reply to a comment we can add a code snippet we can add um, an image whatever it is you want to do so it's just going to be really fun and yeah we see we're fetching a related post here so it's just a really dynamic thing that we have here. Next up, we can also go to our the other page. I don't know why this happened. Yeah, so we can also go to the other page here. Yeah, that's the mental health, and you, the same functionality happens here. So we did use that too. If I also try to, you know, to to uphold that, you know, it's already subscribed. So yeah, fun things really. So yep, yeah. and we're rendering and all this we're controlling our content using a ls cms sanity so sanity is an ls cms that allows us to you know dynamically control our content so the whole point of an ls cms is that an ls cms provides you with a content management system in which you get to pick whatever front end you want to use you could use whatever framework you want to use you could also decide if you want multiple front ends and you just want a central hub to con con control your content you know perhaps you want an e-commerce website and an e-commerce application you know you can have those multiple front ends and then you have a central hub to continue to control your content so you can see here um our posts you can see them so when we push here it's going to get published and also all these various things i did in the process of building and deploying we're going to make use of next years for high quality web applications we're going to make use of sanity as i mentioned we're going to make use of tailwind css which is a css um framework and we're going to do you know like what they said, we're going to do all our time without leaving our HTML to see 
and we're going to make use of frame motions for our styling mailchimp would be the one to power our subscription and fast comments would be the one to power our comments so with no further ado let us get so right into it so we'll head over to next year's and we're going to copy the what we have here so let's head over to create a new file i'll call it um a new folder rather cms blog blog tutorial all right so and uh, right here i'm just going to open it in my visual studio code uh, you, i could either open it this way or i could open it from the terminal and if you want to open it from the terminal yes how you go about it so i could just do cmd and i can write code space and full stop when i do that press enter and you're going to have it all open here so why i why did i remove it okay i did remove it <laughs> so let's go again uh, why did i thought it was already opened okay code space yep that should be it so i could just cancel this let's let's let the brain run fast yes i trust the authors all righty um what's this okay that's just some error code all right so allow access uh sorry all right so we'll create two folders one will be for our front end and one will be for our sanity back end so i can just call the cms blog um sanity should we do that oh let's hold on with that would we'll, we'll just we'll do that when we're installing our sanity okay and i'll just delete that now okay so right here um let's open our terminal so i'm just going to do cd into our front end folder so we'll just do cd front end and then I would be able to do this. I'm going to do a full stop saying that I want it to install in this folder. So if I press enter, we should have that up and running. I ask to proceed. So I'm going to say why. Yes, we would like to use TypeScript. Um, yes, yes, no source directory. I'm making use of app router. I'm going to use the default configurations there. So while that is doing, we're going to um, try to set up our sanity CMS. So right here, maybe I should just move my face up a little bit here. I'm going to create a new, let's open a new terminal. All right. So how do we go about installing our, our sanity? All right. So let's just come here and copy this. So I'm going to paste it right here and, and same thing. All right. So I'm going to say yes, that's why. And then, all that, let's wait for it to load. I right, guys. So <laughs> I don't know if the key okay, should, should be faster now. Mm. if you're enjoying this so far don't forget to like share and subscribe and i encourage everyone to push through it's going we're going to have a fantastic ending so to say so yep i'm going to be making use of my google account um i'm going to click on allow what did i do what did i do allow access actually oh no let's let's go back okay i'm just going to use the browser i think i click on something basically so there's a, there's another account that i use at gmail.com all right so just do that then okay
so i've been able to log in successfully if that's not the case for you perhaps you just create a new listing so yeah we want to create a new project um and i'll probably call it cms to, to tutorial blog okay and that will be set then thereafter um yeah we're going to use the default data set configuration and it's going to access we're going to just click enter then we'll use a blog schema the whole point of the blog schema is just to just show you um a basic template on how you can go about it we might not exactly use it but you just get an idea really so let's create a blog schema yes i'll be using typescript and you can see here we have it all created then we're using npm so that'll be fine so we, let's go back and check up so we just have our basic um sanity setup so later on we're going to come back and check take a look at our sanity you know when they are literally asked someone that needed help with sanity and someone the person told me do you mean sanity as in the cms or sanity as in your your brain or your mind i was like obviously i need i needed that sweet but well, that was actually quite thoughtful if you think about it uh, maybe not the assumption i don't need help sanity. you get what i mean yep, it's still loading so we could just pause and come back let's check up on our sanity it's taking better time we have it all set up so we'll start by running npm run dev and that should open our local host 3000 okay i have to do something right now so that now let's go and try npm run dev yeah so we have this shown in this should be showing on local host the issue with this is that i i sort of go so using a new device so adds the number of configurations so i think um it's a long story but i'll sort it out now all right so um this is a reverse look i was 3000 and let's see what we have here so we're first faced with um this all right and we don't need any of these so let's start by editing what we have in our page dot tsx all right so going to our page here we can just simply i'm just going to just like erase all that's here and i'm going to put some like in there all right so if you go back i think we have that okay what what okay uh i i see i made a mistake I think I I really prefer using Chrome for my stuff. So let's fix all this styling issue. So let's go to our global CSS and let's remove all our styling just right down here. And let's um also go to see what change that brings. So yes, we have this set. Alright. Um I think that's basically majority of it so in our app folder let's start by creating a com a folder for our components so call it our component and then would we'll, um create a nav bar that says x and we'll create a file called footer that's for footer.txx and so let's just use this and we have that simple template set and refc too how did how i did this was how i did this by installing a um two snippets um es7 react snippet so that's just it simplifies things for us so here you go so you can just download it in your market extension you know this so we can notify our layout all right so um let's go to our layouts and in our layouts we're going to we're going to import our number and we're going to import our 
a photo okay and right here i prefer using the font i think we can put this to um so write, write anything you want yeah tutorial bug and um my blog whatever yep whatever um this is my blog Yes. So let's go back here, and what we want to do now is, yeah, we're making use of Inter. I don't want to make use of Inter. I prefer using Beleza. And yeah, I could just write Beleza here. Yeah? Um, this would be a small letter. After doing that, you want to put Beleza here. Yeah? And um, why are you showing these errors? Because if you actually try to go over to, um. Go search for Google font. So things that you can actually use whatever font you want to use. So if I put Beleza, now, Beleza actually has just one style. It's actually my favorite font. And I don't know why it has just one style. Either way, let's say for example, you want to use Popping. So Popping has, uh, has more variety. You have like over 18 styles. You can see just right here. So you can actually use whatever. So yeah, we have to sort of specify the style, the width we want to use. So I'm just going to put this right here. I'm going to put the weight. And here I'm going to put 100 because that's like the only one he has. Yeah. So we can save that up and see that the error is gone. So why are we working with layouts? See, we're working with layout because when you go through the site, you see that we have this. Um, let me spread this open. We have this consistency of navbar at the top, and and the footer so it is that no matter the page we have we are in we have that consistency and we want to avoid repetition repetition in the sense that we don't want to be putting number and footer in every page so we can just start them up as a component then import it okay that's the beauty of react right so let's actually just import navbar and let's just say import footer right so we can just i'm just going to cut this out and just go right inside here and use navbar and come here and use footer sorry to be self-closing okay and just in between here we can put children our children and we can save that up okay so if we go back to check out our local host 3000 should be should be was it <laughs> yep we can see that we have that set you can see we have it set all right let's try and start it up so what i will start by doing i'm just going to do that once here is we'll create a div for this and place our navbar inside why are these because we want our navbar to be fixed so i'm just going to set it up to be fixed we also want uh, another thing that we also want to do is to just um create z index we can just create z index for 20 z index is stuck in order and why we're doing that is because when we go back to our page here, when we roll it, you can see that there's this there's this sort of you know um stacking order, all right. We want it to go beneath it. So that's actually why we're doing um the Z index, okay? So uh I think you won't say anything yet because we we don't yeah, we don't really have any stacking order, right? There's nothing to really show for it. So we can also make one the width to be full. I want to say a top of zero. So let's save that up and I think we're done yet. So let's go back to our number and let's get some work done. What you want to start with is let's try and pull our use clients because we yeah, let's do that. Okay. After we can come over, let's try and import a link because we're going to make use of links here. Let's just do that and set that down already. Okay. And let's start styling. Okay, so if we go, if you look at our menu items now, look at menu, we kind of have menu items here. All right, so I'm just going to create like a type for that. And all this, of course, we set it to be fixed at the top. So we're going to sort that out later. All right, nothing to be worried about. I got you. So let's do like a type. Okay, and we're going to do menu item. And yeah, we're going to set the type to type to, type to, to be string. And we want the route to string on the children. 
So what I'm using children is that you might not actually need it, but preventing you want seems like a drop down menu. You, you might need children. So we're just putting it down just for you to know. We're not exactly you might not exactly use it. Alright. So next let's do an export. Let's export that and just do the menu items. And we're setting as an that's like an array of other like types inside it. So what we want to do now is we're going to do that for um a title. We're going to give it a title home. And I'm going to give it a route. All right. So, yeah. So I'm just going to take this and put it down two more times. So we're going to do one for mental health and one for programming. All right. So next just makes use of app routing. What does that mean? It means that it routes based on the name that you give your files inside your app folder all right so for example we created a route a, a route here called mental load and created a route here programming it means that whatever name we're giving this route must be the same way that must be the same way we should save it in our files so we're writing mental health here and i didn't put any dash in between it means that where, where is it oh no <laughs> all right so that again so create an, a new app a new folder yeah all right mental health okay and let's create a page.css basically. All right, inside it. So we can just do RAFCE and that's we can say main no no let's say mental health. All right, so we can just come here and write mental health. So it means that whatever you're naming your route here should be what you actually put in, you know, in like like if you put a dash here it's not going to route it. like put a dash here and you named it mental health here it won't route there if you put mental health here and without a dash and put a dash here it won't route there okay so let's just try to get that straight so let me let me let me explain what i mean to you so now i'm going to try and write some mental health okay. right it's actually going to you can actually see the mental out here it might not be so clear but you can see the mental out if i put that here it's going to no sorry if i put that somewhere here, it will tell me page not found i'm oh, sorry it will tell me page not found so yeah all right and you can see that we have that consistency of the number coming up here all right so i just wanted to, wanted to get that to get, give you the understanding just right away so let's go on and let's create that for our programming so let's go to come here and do programming okay so let's create a page at csx too and let's do our area c and let's do programming okay and i can come here and do programming so we can save that and if you try routing it you can see that you're actually also going to get routed through programming So you can see programming just right up here it's okay let's go on right so next up is that we we'll, let's go back to our yeah and let's let's try and make this look beautiful all right so we're going to be making use of react Knit, react um functional components and it's it's quite it's used in it's like a building block in most modern react applications so what it does like it's a type that ship ships with react type script types okay so just very useful that we also you know put it in our code all right so yep let's go on so we can come here Right, I'm going to react FC to react functional component technically. Right, so going on, we have that said, okay, I see no errors. Oops, what did I do? All right, so let's just do this and let's create a div, create a div. All right, that's the last div. And trust me, the last one now. All right. So why it is because yeah, we want to put a div for our logo. So so you're not confused. Yeah, we have div for the logo. Okay. Let's separate that so you're all clear about that. Okay. Okay. okay so right here, you can just let's add like a class name. Oh, okay. Oh, 
let's create a div here and do my calculations well so let's create a div here let me just try and do this up with let's form out with prettier okay okay so now we can have the div for for our logo here we'll create a div so I could just separate that out so we're all clear all right so we could go on here yeah, why our div for logo will simply contain the div for logo so yeah what i made as a logo does be a simple href attribute a simple um, text logo really so i'm going to put a span and just put ub blog right and here we're going to do a class name just tell later on okay so let's try and get the perspective to what we're doing so in advance we can just put a cursor post pointer here that's because you know when we click on it you actually want to see that okay this is um we're actually clicking this stuff is clickable technically all right so um you can see let's save that up and let's it's not looking so nice so let's try and give it a background as of now the background is transparent which is not like what we did so we can just go up just here and right we can do a md flex and what we want is i want the items to be centered I want to just find the space between so just find the space between here it's simply just going to create a space between our logo and our menu con many items which are going to later on put which you're yet to see so for example like here we have this we have a space and we have this so this is the justify space between right so let's go on and moving forward i'm going to give the background white and a padding top and bottom of four y4 that's part in top and bottom y is like your vertical axis and in medium, medium display you want to give a padding at the left and right of 10 and of 10 and on all screens i'm just give it a simple padding of seven all right so we can save that up and let's see what it looks like so let's go back here let's see we have that so you notice here there's something that's distinguishing um the so um, okay this one clearer okay so you can see that this is this sort of shadow effect do know can you see it just somewhere right here this is like shadow effect okay so making use of that shadow effect is a property until we call it shadow all right so anytime we don't know anything really anytime we don't know anything just search it up so you could just come here and search like um how to how to do the sorry for my tapping shadow effects Wind. Okay. and then you see this i can just click here and it gives you so you can see various 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 talents it shows you like variety that you can pick so making sure the shadow md all right so let's just go back to our code let's go back here let's do a class let's do shadow md all right i want the way to the full we want the top, top zero the left one zero i also want to give you that z index property okay so just leave 50. you can save that up and let's take a look back at our website that up you can see that in place so let's start up our you know let's start up our logo to make it look nice so for, what we want to do we want to make the font to be bold we want the text to be violet and be set let's say to about 600 I want the text to be about 2xl that's text size and want everything to be about okay so save that up let's take a look at what we got here all right so so next up let's just go right beneath here okay so we want to try to actually get you know the I want to try and get um this stuff set up setup so you notice know, so that here all right um we get this nav bar so let's try and get the nav bar okay we can just go up so let's go up <laughs> or right, let's first go to let's try and we're going to use this um 
your euro icon so search for euroicons.com the links also be in the description below and um you also want to you can search for npm euro icons and then you can get this and head over to your vs code let's open our terminal and cd into your front end folder and install it so technically if you're opening a new one how you go about it is you just cd into front end right and install it simple right so it's installed in your front end folder okay so that said we're going to be making use of we're going to be making use of um you can see how to use it yet you can see how you can use it so you just go ahead and search for what you want to use so i made use of the x icon i also made use of the hamburger so, so i said hamburger the burger which is the right one okay so it does go over head over here and let's actually import that's the battery that was the one i made use of the battery right icon and solid and you have the x mark so um solid because you you get the ones that uh, you can get the one for outline i like the x that we saw here you can get the one see this when something so outline this one is solid get the, if you want mini if you want micro whatever you want just go ahead and get your stuff there all right so yep let's go on and let's try and do this so let's try and do that next up let's set use the use state and we want to ensure we want to in using our use state okay so if you click on this top one it imports it up here for you so thereafter let's actually just use um let's use this use state so once set it to ease open okay i will get set force initially all right so like i said just go beneath that div there and we want to do what we're going to say we want to do this div div for navbar icon okay but, and yeah we're going to create another div and let us create a space in it here and we're going to create an on click function so let's set our on click function here and say set is open all right and this won't be this is just be a simple process and we're going to say is open okay all right so um technically um the use state you know it's the function okay that allows us to you know the use state function is like a hook you know that allows us to actually add states to our react components all right so um i think it's an area what's up guys all right oh that's solved all right so now um in our code by setting our use state to be false all i say is that we want to why isn't to declare a new variable is opened okay so and we're setting that that variable to be false initially all right so that use state ought to return a pair so that is the current state value and a function so it lets us actually update this and that's because we're updating and we're switching between the x icon and the bar icon all right so our is open is the current state of what we're trying to do our view set is open as a function that we use to update the state so whenever i want to change the value of is open we'll just call the set open with the new value all right so how do you set the values so and all that will happen on the on the on click event handler so i'm just going to use the ternary operator here and say that is open right and we're going to do this for the x mark icon and sorry and we're going to um, do this for the bar icon so when it's when it's open okay and when when it's opened um this ought to show and since there is false so since when it's not open um this technically what we're trying to say that when it's open here yeah, we want the x stuff to show so when we click on x and it's closed it means this one should be the one showing all right so what we're trying to is what we're trying to achieve 
so when um when it's when 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 this is opened x is going to show when it's closed the bar is showing all right do you guys get that okay so um we also have to put in a class here there's been a class here all right so we might not see anything showing yet let's try and style it up i'm going to set this to be absolute um because we want it to be at the right top so let's just let's give it the right it um top six so pointer edge to be seven the index to be about 50 and on the last screen we want it to be eating but if i make it eating let's actually see what we're working on so let's go back here and then we would see it pop up here okay okay this is working so now let's make it eating so let's go back here and make it eating and then we see that it's normal showing okay so let's set up our, our menu items right isn't that true so i'm just gonna create space right here and let's do a div let's create a great that div and in between there let's first try to map over our menu items so get to the menu items are map so here here we're mapping over our item and the index that's like the position of it i don't want to make a mistake okay yep so let's go ahead and let's what's that yep let's move it up and what we're going to do we're going to return this so we want to return it as a link all right so when you're using a link one thing is paramount and that's the href but now that we're using the link in a map you know like the map function we want to ensure that we have our href and we have our key okay so setting our href we want to get the item roots okay and next up is that what's this what's this what's this what's this okay and next up is that we want to set um give it the key we're going to set that as the link yep the link in next all right so let's add a class name before we go all in and starting let's actually get a menu item just a menu item title sorry i meant item the title so let's save that up and let's see what we got so we have everything rendering right good to go so let's try and start all this up let's try and start it up let's try and start it up okay so we could um we could start by trying to you know um let's have a styling this up because we're trying to set a condition for when okay when we're in this particular screen size show the show that let's make use of our curly braces and making use of our template strings because we're going to put in a function inside sorry for being that fast okay so i'm going to do md flex mediums display i want it to be flex a medium display i want the items to be center and medium display we also want the party and bottom to be zero we want the party and the bottom for all screen sizes to be 12. that's because now we're trying to style it up for how it will look like when it's about sorry when it's about this size okay because when we're doing it like this you get we're trying to style it up like this so we get to do a padding bottom of 12. We want it to be set to be absolute okay and want to be at medium display we want to be static and the background the background to be white okay so at medium size we also want to put a z index of auto and a z index of 50 on other all other screen sizes then we want to give a left of zero we want the width to be full we want the medium display to be also with auto and we want the medium display as the padding at the left to be zero and on all other screen sizes, we want the padding at the left to be nine. We want the padding at the left on all screen sizes to be eight. We want to give it a transition all. So you can see that what we're trying to do is like as we there's this sort of as, as we're coming like this, right? You can see that transition. You can see that transition. You can see that um that transition when we're trying to like just slide in at all. And so yeah, let's go back. So give it a transition all. And then we'll do about a duration, and our duration here will be about 500. Okay, 
and let's do our ease in right and let's then set our condition so we'll set a condition for is open all right and we'll use a temporary you know operator and we'll set it when it's open we want it to be about 10 uh, 18 at the top and then forget the other part of itinerary operator and we're going to use uh, i did a lot of cal calculation and inflation and i got i came about minus 490 pixels so other things is actually just testing things out and i found that this worked perfectly okay so we have that set we have that set we have that set we have that set so um let's still go on here you can check it out okay let's go here and style that was just for the winds all over so let's go ahead and style this okay let's style it to make look more presentable so the medium screen we want the margin at the left to be eight all right and thereafter we want the medium display the margin on the top and the bottom to be zero and all other screen sizes we want it to be seven we want to give it a font medium and we want the text to be xl we want everything to be uppercase we want when we over over it we want to change the color so we want to set the text to be violet perhaps 600 and we want to give it a transition a transition all right and then we want to give it the ease in out okay thereafter i want to give it a delay of about 150 and when we over over it we want to give it minus translate y one okay then when we over we want to scale it about let's say i wanted mine to be 300 and let's give it a duration of about mm, let's see 100 let's give a flex and item center all right so i'm going to explain this over translate to you so when put an over minus translate y1 well when we go over to our side and we do, do like this it goes up assuming we didn't put the minus right in front it's going to actually go down and here's what i'm talking about so you see it's going down it's going down all right so that's why we put the minus there okay so we all have that all working is all set up all well and good all right so next up we're going to move to the footer and try to get something done all right so let's head over to footer and let's get started guys let's move on to the footer right so just right here on the footer let's just try and just make this, like this and let's do a div a simple div you don't have to write anything there or perhaps let's write footer again and so we can see what it's looking like so let's use import our use client all right, that's it. And we're making use of links too. So let's, sorry, making use of links too. So let's import our link. Okay, all right. So you can save that up and let's see what it's looking like here. Yeah. So we can't say anything, right? All right. So let's try and add some padding at the top. I don't know why I still did this. I literally said, <laughs> I literally wanted, okay, what's we making like this? Let's do a div. Let's do a div to like just contain the old stuff. Let's just do another div, right? And let's put that here for a test. So right inside this div here, let's try and add some padding because there's sort of a space up. Let's make that about 16. Let's put a padding at the side of about four. And let's set the margin to be auto so it's sort of rightly centered. Then on a small screen, we want the max width, you know, to be sorry, max. On the max width, you want you want it to be XL, and want the MD max to also have a full width. Next up on a large screen, LG rather. We want to set set the max width screen.
we also want to set the max width screen okay and then we'll just send the medium screen we want to so give it a padding x24 we want lg x it all right so we have that set so let's save that up and let's see what it looks like let's see we're able to bring the footer just down here isn't that nice that's nice all right so thereafter let's do a div here All right, we've done this div. And in this div, we're going to have three more sort of divs, okay? As we div here, let's, let's just call this first div. Okay, let's go and space that all right here. Yeah. Let's do another div here. And the last one, let's make it like um, paragraph, okay? It, uh, I'm just going to span in between. So what I'm trying to do here is we'll try want to create a layout to get this um this three space thing. Okay, that's what we're trying to do, right? So what I'm going to do next up would be that this div that is wrapping wrapping out three divs, just like this div right here. Let's give it a class. So we're going to make use of grid. So we're going to say that we want wants to be a grid. Okay. And want a gap of then in between each of our grids okay i'm going to say row gap six all right and then let's say mb8 and on a small print one the grid to be two okay and lg we want to give it want to put it into like for distance so technically it's, we're going to say we want the grid okay. hold on what's going on now <laughs> sorry so sorry oh, right we want the font to be semi bold so we'll save that up um let's put second in here let's put third stuff Let's see. It's been as normal. This isn't this is, this is so nice to show now. So you can see that we have like a just right here. Okay, so we have that set. All right, we have all that set. All right. So next up, what we want to do is to um, let's start each of those ones. So this one, I'm just going to give a class name of SM and small screen. I want it to span two columns. So let's see what that looks like. You can see it's spanning two columns. So it's shifted this to the other side, right? We are spanning two columns, you get. All right. So let's try and create what we want inside that column. And perhaps in advance, okay, let me so write the first div here. Let's also start with the second div up. So we can say we want the margin at the top to be six, right? And on LG on the max screen on the large screen, we say we want max width. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. So it's here we have we're also going to add part into the other ones, all right? Don't panic. Um let's go to the last one. And we'll come back there. So I hope you guys get the old concept now. All right, so we well, let's have a, another div here. All right, and let's just do something because we want to have like four. We yeah, like let's see how many do we have here now. All right, so um. What we're going to have in this last one be our contacts. Okay. Um, what we have in the other one was just for this. All right. So I'm going to try to break it down really for you guys to understand. So yeah, we just want to give it a good space. Come on. And yeah, we're going to say we want to give a space. All right. So. Button. 
to what else looks like. All right, so we're kind of having putting some structures in place. All right. So I want us to be really careful so we're not making any mistake. So what I would do is that I'm going to put this div because this one represents um, the, this one, this one I just cut up off. Okay, let me put it right here. It's going to represent the, let me save that. Okay, yeah. So this this first div here represents here. Yeah, the or second represents these two things here. Yeah. Then we have this one and this one. So we've just tried to just set it up, right? So let's put in a content right now, right? So just here, yeah, we want to put in a link for our logo, right? So I'm going to put link. And since it's a logo, Simply we're linking it to home. something like that. And inside there, just do an area label area label. And here we'll say go home. Alright, and let's do a title we codes. Yeah, we're gonna do this pan. I'll get to write UB group. Yeah, so let's give it a class name here. Yeah? Like we did before. So let's just say we want the margin left to be two. Want the text to be violet. 600. We want the text to be about 2XL. And we want it to be uppercase. And the font to be bold. I want the track here yeah? to be white. The tracking white is sort of means the space between each of the letters. So you can save that up and you can also search let's try and search that up. So um you can search for what is tracking used for in tailwind TSSS previous. So tailwind lets you conditionally apply this as server. So what basically is just for letter spacing, okay? So that's the purpose. So you can see when you use tracking tight, sort of tight copy, so sort of tight together, tracking normal, the normal one, tracking wide, this sort of is more wider spacing. So that's why I use tracking wide. Do you guys get? It? All right. So let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. We've done that. Next stop, what we want to do is let's. We've done this. So let's just. Um, do a padding a yeah a paragraph yeah all right so we're going to write here everything in other words everything related to programming I'm gonna just give it this a class yeah or oh, we want the text to be small we want the text to be gray I want it to be like 800 there yeah, about okay and just below yet so we're going to give another part yeah, I want to we'll say mental art and books. Okay, so that's for class name here. Yeah. And we want to NT for text XSM text three eight hundred. So let's save it up and let's see what it looks like. So you can see we're getting something that's similar to this, isn't that? Okay, so let's go on. All right, let's style. Let's do. Let's put in something here. All right. So here to let's do a P tag, and here we're going to write contacts. Okay, and let's style that up. So for our contacts, let's give you one text base. So like text base like you want to meet like text base is basically like how you want the text to be do you want the text to be thin do you want text to be so that's some way you use text base it's like it's controlling the size not the no like it's not like font board so it's controlling sort of the size of it it's where you have text excel so text base is a control the size so text base seems sort of normal all right so we also want to set it as tracking wide and one text to be gray about 900 okay I'm just oh yeah we're going to give it here and we're going to give this a class name or flex 
So what I want to put in is our phone number. So yeah, we're just going to put um a pardon. So let's keep saying pardon. P tag phone. I want to put a link just right here. So what this link? So we're just going to put in numbers here. I'll just do plus two, three, four. Let me see. Sorry. Come on. And move this. This is linking to where? So we're going to put in some um, attributes here. Let's give it a href. And a href would technically be the number here. Yeah, okay. You want to be careful to do that? No. So let's do this. And right. Okay. So having done that, you want to give it an area label. And say my phone number. Mm. Right. Next, let's give it a title. Be my phone number. Right, let's give it a class name too. Okay. So I want to give this a transition. Cause a duration of 300. Rather than this, what I want to do is um I want the text to be secondary. What's going on? I want the text to be secondary. I want the over the text violet and about 400. Okay. Yep. So that's technically what we want to do. So just below here, I could just give it like because I want to go to the next line. All right. And here we could create another div, no? Here we could create another div. And I could also give it a class name of flex. Right. So here we can do another one for email. All right. And to make life easy or easier for us, we could just do something simple. Since we're repeating what's here, let's just copy this and just paste it here. So we're going to change up some things, okay? So let's change this to email instead. And the href here would be to let's say mail to a ub at gmail.com. Right. And what we're going to put here would now be instead of um phone number here, we're going to put my mail, my email, and get to my email. So leaving this answer here, we're going to put ub at gmail.com. Alrighty. So you can remove the line, the break here. We have that. So here is our stored stuff. And here we're just going to create the response basically. Alright. So here we're going to do create the response. So what we're going to do here is first let's just give it a class name because it will uh, technically be the same thing. Oh, that's 500 right so i was a bit developer here yeah. and put this down three more times so yeah i'm going to put speaker yeah i'm going to put writer right Let's save that up and let's see what's happening. Okay. So you have this. All right. So next up, what's next to do? So next up, we're tr going to try to put in the copyright, right? This side. All right. So let's go ahead. So let's add. Um, so if you look here, we can we will have that. This is making use of, um, it looks like an HR, right? So what we can do now at that point is to, we could add um, a, a border, right? So just right beneath the div that closes are, you know, this, this old developer speaker writer. Just like one to the second div, let's create another div, all right? And with this div, we're going to give it a class of flex. 
and we want to do it in the flex code um reverse direction and we want to just find the content to be between and we want the padding at the top to be five and we want the padding at the bottom to be ten and we want a border at the top right and then we want at last screen we want the flex to be you know row okay so we just take a quick look at that it's uh, we're going to see this um uh, let's ensure now we're doing the right hand side okay so just in between here create a div and this div i'm going to give it a class name in so that i want the text to be small and i want the text to be gray and 600 so yeah we want to have our copyright okay but at the moment we're going to create component into a component but at the moment we do not have any component like that so right inside a component for that we're going to create a copyright the csx okay and i'll do this rfc and um let's import our copyright into our footer and going here let's import copyright okay so that should resolve it so as we're seeing the changes as we're doing changes here you have to see it reflect there so um let's do our use client all right and we're going to make use of use effects because we want to be able to change our date regardless of um we don't like yeah we don't we don't always want to be out coding it so to say so just want it to be dynamic there are all that bigger things issues that we could do with certain sort of so there we go and then yeah we're going to do a copyright we're going to say of our um let's, let's just put blog and then we're going to make that blog is going to be a string okay and we're going to use a use date of our current year and we're going to set it to be it's going to be a number it's going to be a number okay the type is a number and just image today we want with what we're saying that is that the number will be a new date and we're trying to get the full year all right so we're going to make use of use effects so we can take the effects <laughs> that sticks so if we take this as our use effects all right in our use effect we're trying to see what we want to update and it goes like this okay this is like the template of how we use effect ought to look like they want to update the current year state and we did that by saying that our intervalid so here we're setting the interval okay so all we're trying to do now is to set the current year and the new date to get the full year all right and yeah we're going to set like 1000 and we mentioned every day every earlier i wanted to update every update every second basically to undo like to undo it during the whenever the page loads all right then what we're trying to now do is that what we want to do is now want to return something i want to return i want to return like the um clear interval okay and here we're going to say that a clear interval if the clear interval here to just pass that into it and we're set so you can come right here and we can create a div and paragraph yeah and just do that that's the ampersand that's and copy and just write copyright copyright I'm going to write a current year blog no current current year Current year, all right, and here we're going to live blog, and here we're just going to put all rights reserved, okay? So this will kind of automatically 
getting what we want. So if I paste it here, there's an error somewhere. Caution. All right. So we have that here. So we can make things better and things like sort of nice. So let's just still put our text to be SM and we want the text to be gray. I sort of feel like this text is looking too small. What do you all think? Okay, you can just set it to be anything. I feel like it looks really small. So, um, without further ado, let's go back to where's the arrow coming from? Okay, let's go back to our footer. All right. So, let um, me just didn't get that. Let me write that again. All right. So, we we'll go back to the footer now. We're going to put here that our blog is equal to UV, so say. Okay. That's sort of manageable, isn't it? All right. Let's try and add some padding to the side. Okay. Should make it look so better. And let's take a look at what I was looking here. So it's taking the same stuff. So what we can just really do now is let's try and get the styling for that arrow logo somewhere. I should remove that. Okay. So what we'll try and do is just to get the spacing that they made use of the goddess px and we've added the l reflection then what we should do now is sort of find the div that's containing you know that same style maybe it could be here yeah. all right so somewhat similar okay yep yeah, same so what we we'll do now is to remove let me remove this one so we have something or balance top yep 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 all right so you're going to create a div i'm going to give you a class name i'm going to create a, give you a class name um Oh, sorry. So you're going to give a class name saying MB, MB9, flex, justify, center. Going on here, um, a better way to put this would be that we want our, well, instead of creating the div here, we'll create our div since we're trying to separate two divs. And that would that would happen by you know so yeah we're going to put our class name the same class name that's here just copy this and just copy this and um place it here then we made a mistake it should not be this just flex just five center and just in between here just take the copied code from the github just and just put it right here So basically this is this is what it is so what i did here there's no nothing too complex here we could change this to be link so let's change this to be link instead of putting a but i think you can just use both to just be just to follow conventional rules so i can just this i'll put this as link instead so um having this as link Oh, sorry, excuse me. All right, uh, this was the link. I'm um, this up. This is the link. So, um, okay, then let's do this one more time. And let me also put this as a link. So, what I just did was to get the SVG of the SVG of um the various um as we do of the various 
icons so and then i wrap them all in a link and with that link i style them so um and here's the styling and then put the link to where you want it to be so it's just really easy and straightforward so we can get to other things i'm not sure this to be running okay so here we have that all right so we can try to start so sort of we are going to move on from our own page what i'm going to do now is that we're going to move on from our own page we're going to add to yeah we're going to move on from our own page and then we're going to add to the other program because this this will be later on towards the end we're going to then fetch it but let's first try and create our post so we'll just go right to so if i go to the programming i should be taken there oh well, that doesn't exist okay so this is the programming as you can see this has been changed here and if you click on our mental also it would also be changed i don't know why it's taking so much time so when you click on mental health you can also see that this has changed so the export default is not a real component in page mental health so let's check what they mean by that so different um, mental health huh? mm. mental health okay let me go to export default Okay, let's fix this up so let's do array i'll just do i think because it's using const let's do array see let's do this is mental out okay and that should fix it all up so if i go back i think that would solve the whole issue we're going to sort out all the things with the um with the the error just right up so we are done with our footer i guess we can actually start styling up okay let's do our banner let me forget about that let's do our banner like i said we'll do so the banner here is this which you have right here so to do our banner i'm going to create a component called banner so create a component called banner.csx and then just use the rfc and we should have that set so i can just write banner here okay so we can go to our page um our page that says x here and then we can just import banner and importing banner we can just write you know put the banner here the thing is that we're not likely to see this let's put it in a div and i'll just call this banner because um the way we styled it the banner won't show like you're supposed to see the text banner right but that's not happening because the banner will be somewhere up here so i'm just going to add a um, number of padding up maybe like page 24 so you're able to see what i'm doing so my not necessarily you can see banner is just right there showing so we're not necessarily be inputting it in our styling but we're sh i'm just doing that for the sake of reference so we can see what we're doing okay that's all set so let's start styling our banner right up here just going to go into the banner and let's all start styling all right so in a banner we first have the whole um picture so i have an asset file that i'm just going to put into my folder here so just write into public can just create a folder called assets so what i'm just going to do here is that i'm just going to drag a folder my folder into it i think i created it somewhere yep so i'm just going to you know just drag it right into my assets okay so assets contains all the images as i plan i intend to use during the course of um during the course of you know this video uh, okay so the i mentioned that we will be making use of frame motion and we'll be making use of 
make use of frame and motion and we're making use of um type react simple type right out so now i'm going to reload the page and you're going to see an effect you can see the way it slides in so that effect is done by frame and motion and the old typing is done by by react simple type right out. so let's do npm i and oh, npm install and what we're installing now will be react simple simple type writer and frame motion okay in pm install react simple type right that was close type writer simple type writer okay and frame our motion so with that i'm just going to press enter and we should have all that npm writer okay typewriter i don't want to just try to check that i'm not making mistakes so what that is doing um so what we're going to do is that we're going to yeah so that's done so we're going to create import use typewriter use typewriter from react typewriter and we're going to import the cursor so the cursor here is simply what we used here because there's this cursor here so that's simply what we used so um if you ever lost now to make use of npm packages one thing you can simply do is just to set them up like npm react typewriter so when you set them up you can just you know you can just do most often they oftentimes they put they actually show you how to make use of it so you can just read all the documentations there and see how to make use of it so um let's go back here and let's try and do something up so what i'm going to do now is to create a constant and that constant to be a text and i'm going to use use say use typewriter okay and we're going to write in the words that we want to use and the words that I want to use are welcome to my blog. Okay, and what else did I put? Programming. Okay, can I just put this? And I write about programming and mental health. So whatever, put in whatever you want to do. So then we're going to put in a loop. And for a loop, we want it to be true. Okay, we want it to loop over everything. Okay. Thereafter, I want to put in our type speed, and for type speed, I'm going to put it 30, and then I'm going to put delete speed, which will also be, um, or rather, I'll make it 10, and then let's use a delay speed, and then for our delay speed, it'll be 2000. Okay, so for our delay speed, would be 2000. Okay, all right, so. That's set. So this should be words rather, not word. Yep. So let's um in here we're going to try and actually render all the things that we put. So if I come here and let's just do text, we're going to come here and I put text, we're going to see all the text that we're trying to render. So let's go back here. Um okay. So this is these are these are frequent errors that you, some errors that you may get when using next, and you can read about it in the doc. So use reduce only works in use client component in client components, and the use client directive at the top of the file to use it. So what we do, like I did in previous ones, is that just right at the top here, you should create the use the use client. So this should probably solve solve majority of the issue that we're having. Okay, unless I didn't spell it well, it's kind of did it well. So you can see we have that. Okay, you can see that we have whatever we wrote just there. Okay, with that said and done, let's now give it some styling. Okay. So our initial div want to give it a class. Okay, I won't give it a width full. 
want the width to be full. So there's something in Tailwind CSS in such a way that we can customize our Tailwind. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So let's quickly, so what I want to do now is custom, you can customize your Tailwind to put in your own custom colors. And you can also customize your Tailwind to put in, you know, um, images. So I want to make use of various background pictures. So I'm going to go into my Tailwind.config.ts and let's start see how to configure our Tailwind CSS like to custom like sort of custom made to what we want okay so what we're going to start with would be that just coming right below here as you can see it's under background image we're going to put um want to call it banner and just right there we're going to put the url of the banner we want to use so yeah i'm just going to put the it's an error here okay i'm going to put the file directory so it's in my public folder under my assets and the name of the file is banner.jpg so next one i'll call it programming banner that's like the one that i've used in our programming page so i could just come here and use url okay i'm just going to put the url and that's the to confirm it that's the is actually programming banner dot so just put in the name of whatever file that you're using so thereafter i'm going to do um um call the next one mental health banner and we're going to put it and like just put the url of where so what i saved it as yeah was mental health so you don't want to miss up on this thing so there's another last banner will be our subscription um image that we use so i just call it subscribe and just use url and put the there and you can see we have all that set so the chances are when you do this you will stop your server somehow so we just have to restart our server again so you can just go back to where it was running and let's end the server and let's do npm run dev again so with npm run dev we can really get can see what to do next all right so let's go back and reload it i see loading ah second quite a while i think I should just try opening a new one see what happens i see we will load faster what okay it's taking a bit of time it's going to be patient okay um i don't i don't get what's happening okay so we have done that you can see you can see that okay our site is working perfectly fine again so what we can now do is that um Let's go back. I think I'll close this up. Yep. So we want the width to be full. We want the background to be banner. So let's just do that and let's see the effect. So we should see it take place. You can see that banner. So let's try and increase it. All right. We want the banner. We want the background to be at the center. And then we want to give it a height of 80. So you're just going to take 80% um, of the old width all right so what i'm going to do now is probably remove the okay okay yeah that's that thing that's fine yep okay let's go there's it there's this weird um spacing look here there's a weird spacing here so let's just remove that it's a bit tiny spacing just right up there so i'll head over to um where the page i think for i just let's try and keep it simple let me close the others and just put this to here since that's what we'll be working with so just add and just remove this part in here we might not be needed it so i just did that so that we can see what it is so that will actually push it all inside another thing you can also do is perhaps depending on your view you can increase the old side thing okay so the next thing we want to do is actually to add an opacity a black opacity so if you look here you can see that the background is sort of darkened 
and compared to the other background. So that dark of, um, effect, it's the, you know, it's the opacity. Okay. I think I'll just close one of this. Okay. It's the opacity. So what we're going to do now is just take this div and let's wrap it into another div tag. And then I'm going to add a class name. And for that class name, we also want the opacity that we're trying to do to be full. We also want to give the same height as 80. I want the background to be black. Okay, and then we're now going to specify the opacity, and yeah, we want the opacity to be 70. Okay, then we also want the text that will be used in it to be white, and because currently our text was black, I'm just give it a Z index of minus one because okay. So that's it. So it's sort of in this index it does the stacking order. So that one is sort of at the back. So when we try to reload this, we should we can see this darkening effect. The next thing we want to try to do is actually to center our uh, to center this text. All right. So let's wrap it. Let's take this again. Cause cut it and wrap it again in the div. And now um let's dial this. Okay. Styling this, we also want a total height of 80 at max specify the max width you want it to be max at um the max width screen okay let's give it a max width and that'll be two xl then at you want it to be centered so do mx auto and then we're going to be making it a flex because we want to put it in middle so we're going to save our flex we want it to follow the flex direction column and then we want to justify our contents to be at the center and also we want our items to to be at the center then we want the text to be for excel okay then at medium screen we want the text size to be about 5 excel and at we want the font to be extra bold we want the food font width to be extra bold thereafter we also want to ensure the text is aligned at the center so i think yeah i made it capital letter which ought not to be so this is the text so let's go back and see what that's looking like all right so we have it but so we have that showing just right up here i noticed we also have this ub block at the top so let's add it so just right above here okay so let's wrap this in a P, a P tag, and just above here to wrap, we'll do an H1 and we'll do the UB, your UB block thing, okay? So starting our H1, to so start our H1, we'll also make the text to be about 3XL. Um, at medium display, we want the text to be of 5XL size, and we want the text to be white. And way you can make it white is by this is another way you can put in like if you want to put in your specific color this, i'm just trying to show you various ways you can do it so if however you want to put in your own specific color without having to go to the tailwind config file then you can actually do that so we we'll put in the font to be semi bold and do ml to be four and mc to be 10 okay so if you take a look at that you have you have that there okay so do the same thing let's also try and style up our programming to to make it to make the text responsive even in smaller screen sizes so we're just setting the text to be text to be 3xl at medium size we also uh, i think i prefer to be xl and at medium size we want the text to be 3xl and we want the font to be semi bold and we want the margin at the top to be two and the text will be white too so like we did before all right so if we go back we have we have the effects see smaller so we have a typing cursor effect so let's add the typing cursor effect and we'll do that typing cursor effect just um beside this so I can just put it beneath this and let's use the cursor. Cursor, sorry. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to put in um the following parameters. So cursor blinking. Um we want the cursor blinking, we want to put the cursor star and okay, 
and I can try to search for a purple color. But honestly, right now, <laughs> I don't have any. Okay, so let's just use the color we used there. That was four two eight five f four. So if we go back to our page, we're going to see that all oh, that's taken. So probably you can find this and like whatever color you prefer to use. Yes, so now what's left for us is that we want that sliding in effect and to have that sliding in effect we make use of motion. So we're going to import motion. So we make use of frame of motion. We're going to import motion from frame of motion. So this ought to be wrapped in curly braces. Yeah. So the way you use move from frame of motion is that wherever you want to use it so let's just um take what have i done now what have i done what have i done i wonder why this is happening okay i don't know what's up no i'm just going to go on well what could i have done to trigger that so import frame motion okay then let's take all these we're going to take a particular we're going to wrap let's wrap this again let's wrap this in another d file since this that's where we want to apply a motion to so just write it the way you mix your formal motion is using motion dot motion and you go to the closing tag of that div and write another motion dot motion and so, if you go to the Framer Motion website, like I think I opened before. Okay, that's still in there. So, you can see various forms. Like, so, here yeah, you see, if you see, um, you see, you see this motion, you see the various functions that I can give it. And then you can, you can try the transitions and see what the transitions look like when the transition. So if you want that effect of a transition, you can actually just copy whatever it's here, whatever that's here. And so you can see various transitions that you want. So yeah, we're making a sliding effect. So I mean, we're also going to deal with whatever transition that will allow for us to you know um that work transition that making use of probably x, y axis, and then you can play around with it and you know you can try and move things here and there and learn more and see do whatever suits you. So yeah, I'm going to do the motion um div and what we want to do is that we can also start with the class name and once whatever this thing to we want the motion to continue to follow the flow uh, we already centered our items in the center so we also want such a way that when we are you know making that effect it should also be along the center okay so what we do is to also specify that the height we want it should be about you know 80 and we want the max width screen and then that'll be two so excel then at media screen we want it to be auto um i want it to be flex and we want to do a flex colon and then we want to justify the items to be centered the it items to justify center items center and uh, yep i think that should be all okay so now the major function and what we need to do in motion div is to set an initial. So setting this initial here, we're going to see that um on the horizontal axis we want it to go to the right by one thousand, all right, and we want to give it an opacity of zero, and then you should also scale it about zero point five. Then we want to add an animate function. So and here we're going to give it um set it to be that okay this is the direction at which we want you to this is how we want you to animate then we're going to put in the transition and with the transition what we're saying is i want to get the transition be a duration of i think there should be about that be it should not take too long we can just use like two my spreading duration well okay sometimes up yeah i get it um set to duration and give it a delay of about 0 0.2 okay and thereafter would give it ease 
so we we'll specify the various points at which you want the ease 0 0.71 you want 0 0.2 and 1.01 okay so that's just something easy this is pretty common here all right there's not something that while in view so why while we see what we're trying to animate we want to give it an opacity of one and then scale it one okay and thereafter i want to use our viewport and your viewport is we're going to put it as true so just write once true and then give it a class name I don't know why okay okay we've already done the class now so let's go around and check what we have and see yeah so we can see how that is up taking effect so you can see that swing um you can even to load it again i think this is like a break here yeah, you can see that swing so you see initially we set it to 1000 so we're seeing initially this that's the swing like this and then it comes back right into place okay so with this we can safely say that we're done with the banner so let's try go up to our programming let's let's go up to our let's go to our because what we're, the majority of the thing that we're doing here is to fetch is to fetch mostly going to be fetching you know data from back end as our sanity okay so i'm just let's just go this okay i'm just gonna just make things faster okay so the word in yes majorly fetch so let's do let's also style this and do the same thing for our um, mental health page and put it all programming and then we'll start working on how to fetch all this so going to uh so going to our programming page at CSX, um, we won't we might not actually be doing much because you already sort of have a template for which we want to do the 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 banner for the other sites, which is similar to that which we have already done. Alright, so we could actually just come to the banner and there mm, okay to avoid all confusion we can take in we can take in this div right this is copy of this div and paste it in our code yep so we won't be making use of motion div here so we can just remove it and we can also remove this same applies for this So you can just remove this, okay? And here you can write programming, okay? And um, what I also want to do would be, we can try to increase the height, and maybe making like ninety six, make this to ninety six, make this to ninety six, and we're applying the same thing. So we come just right up here. Let's go to our programming page. So go to our programming page. We have this. So let's try change the banner. Remember, we tried changing the banner in the initial at the beginning or before now, and I change it to programming banner. So I could just go back and take a look, and there we have this all set. Yep. Let's check. So we have set our programming banner to be 96. Okay. And we can just copy the same thing here and paste it in our mental load. So just come here and just put V. I'm just changing to mental health, and we can just change the banner to mental health. I think that's what I saved it as. 
So if you open up this in another page, you can see that okay, we're going to have the old mental health um banner changed. I may have made a mistake somewhere. So I think we must have made maybe a spelling mistake with our with in our two windows config. So let's copy this so I'm not making a mistake. Um so you ought to load possibly we're not seeing anything. Is it the image we used? Let's go to our tool with config. Let's check the name that we used to save because this might be some silly mistakes. So, um, all right, I think I'm doing the right things. So, I don't know what's wrong now. So, let's try something else and just test to see that something is working so if i do this okay see i think it's sort of the image i'm trying to... okay let's take it one more time so we go mental health banner public assets mental jpg so what could we be doing wrong then we don't seem to be doing anything wrong so perhaps for now i will just leave it like that i can't seem to pick that is wrong all right so let's just go on and so right beneath here right beneath the div this div okay so let's take let's wrap this all of this in a div Okay, this, this div will just be the one wrapping everything. So let's create an, another div here and we can write, put an h1 and say, um, all my programming post. Yeah, it should be meant out. Okay, and with that, we can simply, you know, go to, we can go back to our programming and do the same thing there literally all right so going back to our programming we can we're also going to simply first let's type this up so we can just replicate these styles technically all right so what we do here is let's make the font to be extra bold and let's capitalize it and Tableau makes the first letter to be in capital letter. There are two different things as uppercase and capitalized. So we're going to do the MD text to be 2XL. The MD, uh, rather, let's make this 3XL. And another thing we want to do is that, and the last screen, we also want, last screen rather, we want the text to be about 3XL. I want to center the text and let me convert my, my spelling errors and we want to center the text and we want the text to be violet and then we want it to be 500 and we want the margin at the top and at the bottom to be 12. so so that is that so let's try to go back and see what's looking like so that's what we have here um all right so we have that set um our text supposed to be violet and why do i feel like some of these things not big enough okay I can also put there all my mental health posts okay let's do in the last screen let's make it five XL. So. So we have something you know working towards. So yeah, that's bigger. So we can just copy the same thing and paste it and do this. Okay, before I do that, we do we'll copy and paste the same thing here. Yeah? So what we did here was to first wrap all these in an, in its 
another div so that's like the div container for the whole page so i don't know what this is okay let's just do div and let's paste it just right there so beneath here we can now put our uh, what we add here initially and just copy and paste this so copy and paste this we write all programming all pro programming yep so that's that's similarly what we're going to do so, so starting off with sanity let's know what sanity is all about so like lsm is so we have to create schemas so in creating schemas schemas are like you setting up the types that you want present in your cms editor okay so for example here because we use a um a template the block template so yeah you can see that you already have like you have your name so whatever at the back of at the content editor you get a field a place where you can input the name of the author and see where the block contents are so this is creating schema so so i'm not talking abstract we're going to actually see how all of that comes into play okay so let's open a new thing here then ensure you cd into the folder so i'm going to cd um cms tutorial that's like enter the um directory and then let's run npm run dev so we did this should open up in locals three hundred and three thousand three three four threes right so um let's give her a little bit of time while it sets other than that just opening up here and then we can explain and see what it would be about okay for eventually when you open it up you get to pick a google account if you want to sync it with your github so yeah like i said your schemas are just technically what you want to be shown in your stuff so i'm going to put this two side by side so we kind of um you can see what we're talking about here so here's my blog schema and for example if i open up posts here yeah, um yep so we open up post and we're trying to create a new post okay when we're trying to create a new post would see here i think i'll just reduce this a little bit yeah so when we're trying to create a new post you can see here that because we have a title that's the title of the blog content we have it just right here then we have the slug and all these styles are just for the um basic markup that would be you know inside like in, in your body basically okay so you have you have that all right so um this is the date when it's published categories and all that those things then another would be the category okay so if you see here that you actually see category so basically the things you have here you see them here and for auto if you check up our auto let's try to create um a new field for auto based on what we have here you see here we created um a name for the auto and you see it's showing right here and we specified the we specify the fields and one of the fields we want there is a slot for the name another field that we want there is a slot for the slug and another field that we want there is a slug for the image and the um the bio and the preview image whatever it may be okay so basically you have a basic concept on what a blog schema is or a like schema in lsm is all about so next up we're not going we're not going to be using the schema that we um we did the whole purpose of this was so that we have like this understanding of what schemas are all about but what we'll be doing is that we're going to delete all this and we're going to create our own schemas so i'll just leave the index dots so i'm going to teach you how to create schemas so all right we can remove everything that's here and also all that's here so like in our in our own site we have we see that we have like two categories we have one that's for mental and one that's for programming so you can come here and we're going to do like mental health the tiers and another which is um programming 
but yes. So having cleared all, we're starting with mental health. So um, we can see how it, everything looks like. Yeah, we see that nothing. You see, okay, we can check this out. You can, you can go through the docs to know how to go about um number of the stuff, creating schemas, and all of that. Okay, so technically this 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 an example they gave. So you can just go over that. All right. So in our case, we're just going to do everything raw. So we'll just have to export default, and I don't want to mix spelling mix it because sometimes you get errors that you you find it's out to trace because of um just some of the slight mistakes so um we'll start with name and the name will be mental health then we're going to go to the type and the type of a document then the type tool which is you know these things are the ones that show at the other side at this side of the page so that's one so also have to sorry it's a mistake so we, have, we also have to specify our fields all right, so a uh, field. All right, hope I spelled that well. And yeah, we're first going to have that for name. And let me just open it up like this. Okay. And that will be the title field. And the type is going to be a string, and the title is going to be a title. So we're going to do the same too for overview. The name will be rather overview. That's like an excerpt, and then we're going to. The type is going to be also a string. Forgive me, and also we're going to have the title. That's what that was going to show like at the top to also be overview. Then another thing would have is the slug. So I'm going to use this as a reference, the one that's already built. So if you come here, we can see that. So what we just did now was to um specify the title. Yeah. Now we've done the overview. Now let's create that for slug, main image, and the content. So let's go ahead. So now for slug, we're going to have a name slug. The slug here is simply um is used in terms of relating to the URL. Then you have the type that is slug and the type to to is slug. Perhaps put in capital letter. So the title here is what's actually showing. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's go on. And another thing we want to have is because we're making it auto generated and it's going to auto generate it based on the title. So if the title is when dark cloud is gather, for example, when we generate it, it's going to like just add iPhone all in between. So it's something that's done by sanity themselves. So it is the options and options and yeah we're going to you know put the source so the source for it would be the title. Right. So I'm just going to add commas here just to stay safe. And another we would want to do is um putting the the main image okay so we're going to have the name as main image, all right? And yeah, we're going to give it a title of main image, okay? And I guess you guys should get the concept of the main image. And the type is image because we want to put like the image that we're trying to, you know, like display, like the main image, technically. So we're going to use hotspots and hotspots here will be true. So this hotspot is a future that feature that allows us to you know um crop images and do a number of things with the images okay so having done this next up would be to create our content okay create the field for our content so we can just name this content and we could give it a type which is going to be an array and then we'll give it a type to content okay next up we're going to add the off and of what exactly are we doing? So first we're going to start with type and since I want the type to be a block, want it to be in form of a block content. And also we're going to put in another even here, we're going to come just right beneath here, and then what we're putting in here would be um the type. And the type here would be that for image. So per adventure you want to add images to like in your in your um 
in your stuff you can just add here and back at where we were you'd observe that like when we used the, the initial one you see that they did a lot of styling for the content so um if you see all the like the um the like scaffold templates like that one you can just copy basically some of the stylings and just put it right here so i'm just going to be doing that for image you can put that for the h1 h2 a3 links and all of that so it's the whole purpose is to have like a rich a rich text okay because i already removed it so i'm mean, gonna get it back but basically the whole purpose is to have a rich text so yeah i'm going to put in the fields that we want um fields the spell okay f i e l d s right okay so yeah um so once we put in the fields we'll, let's start with the type So we're going to put text and here we're going to put the name. So it's for description and we're going to put the title. So let's not forget to put the comma there. So I just want to play safe. So I'm just going to put in the commas there. Okay. And lastly, here. sorry. So technically, um, I think this should be all. Let's confirm. So we can save this, and nothing's going to show yet, especially here. What we need to do next would be to actually go to our index, and first we're going to be importing it as mental health, and then we're going to, you know, just show it here. So I can save that, and let's check it out. Okay, this was someone. This, this is one, what I tried to add when I was testing. So, get a title. Love is fine. Um, overview. Good stuff. Uh, or oh, what? What should I now? Love is love is fine. Fine. Okay. Okay. And like a slug, could just generate it here, yeah? and we can upload a main image. So. Um, I actually don't have any image here. Oopsie. You know what? Let's let's let me use something. Okay, let's go to asset. So I'm just going to rotate. Okay, now yeah, I'm going to um rotate between the stuff we picked. I think yeah, I've picked. I put it inside app. Okay, it's in our public folder. So we. I'm just going to shuffle around this. So let's pick our banner first. Okay, so. That should upload. You can see it's uploading. Yep. So yeah, we can put in a put in stuff. So I think I already have like something done here. So I'm just going to just try to copy all of those things and just press it here. So um nah not do this to me so actually we could just all right so I think yeah so you could do a number of stuffs here you could put this make it bold um you could make stuff italic okay you can make things italic. You could add, you could add, make things italic. Um, you could add the code block. Let me put stuff there. You could put on the line. Okay. And you're all set. All right. So, so that's that's that. All right. So. Next up would be to actually publish this. So we can just publish this as a start. So we're going to do, replicate the same thing for programming. And what we're going to do, we're just going to copy all this and just paste the same thing here. And what we're just going to change here would be, you know, programming and programming here too. OK, 
છે સો આઈ થિંક દેટ ઓ સાઇ કે સેવ દિસ એન્ડ ગો બેક ટુ આર ઇન્ડેક્સ એન્ડ ધેન ઇમ્પોર્ટ ઇટ હિયર So we can go to yeah and we're going to see that it's all set up. Okay. We didn't export it yet. So let's put it here. Programming. Okay. So adding back here we can actually see i didn't save it so adding back here we can actually see it pop up yes this should be fine so we can come over here and let's add something yeah so i'm just going to pick up something random for what we already did um okay we're talking about lsm so let's do something yes yeah, so this is going to copy this copy this um copy this so this is going to go right here and i'm going to let's quit click here by creating a new one and we're just going to paste it just right in here um let's come here and paste it just right in here and you can auto generate this and you can come here and paste paste this right in here so with all that said let's add a, an image and we'll pick from our assets and probably pick this and okay we can just wait for it to load and i think it just just wait don't forget to like share and subscribe i'm sorry i've not posted in a while I was I was busy I was in school really and quite juggling a number of things so but I think for a long time I'm going to be a full time so yeah that's that's good one so let's just publish this and yep yeah, it's published so we've pretty much done the first part the next part is let us render it all right so when it comes to rendering we make use of query languages So query languages are basically things that able to actually fetch your data from whatever API it might be in. Okay? So, now, Santi makes use of a query language called Grok, an open source query language developed by Santi. So, how is Grok used? So, basically, here is where we can make queries for Grok. We can actually search, you could search my normal bro Grok. So, Grok um Santi language Okay, so you can see that it's an open source. So you can just click on it. So it's actually an alternative to GraphQL, and it's seemingly more sort of better than GraphQL, really, right? So yeah, 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 yes. How you know you get your various stuffs. So you can just go through it, and there are a lot of data query examples. It's actually really easy. You pay it off fast. So this is when you're trying to. You can see when you want to query for everything, where you want to query for um a certain type of something. So when you want to query for, like you can see type in movie person, number of lots lots of things trying to query for a title and all of those other stuff. So really, have fun with it. Feel free to go through um any of those stuffs. Okay. So starting off let let's actually make a real query. So you can see this is how you query for if you want to query for all movie documents. So let's take this for example and we can just copy this and instead of movie what are we trying to query for? So this is already a query. This is this is one that you know I already did before and um So if you just press here, yeah, but this time we're not querying for movie. What do we want to query for? We want to query for probably mental health. And when you click on fetch, we'd see you we'll probably get everything related to mental health. All the posts that we had written. Okay. So we can see that here. Yeah. And 
okay 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 this is the one that i already deployed so this is the one that we're currently doing you can see we can see the um good stuff that we already saw here and if we're trying to query for programming we could you know just click on fetch and we see um a lot of things related to programming you can see the overview we can see the assets so we're just trying we're going to try and reference each of these things and actually render them that's the whole purpose so but eventually you want to be more specific and you want to you know probably just want to get the title you can actually just put the title there and then you get the title but eventually you want the overview you can just put it here and then you get the overview so um let's do this all right what's what's the issue okay let's let's see let's see what's what's let's first check all the data and what we're fetching okay overview right because we have to ensure that it's not going to be responding no because that's what we're fetching our own page so it should be Okay, this is the error. Sorry. So overview. So actually this ought to be in a, a small letter. So that's probably coming from our code. So let's check it out here. Yeah? So we've come here. Um, we need overview. Let's look at overview. So let this let's make this a small letter actually, and let's also make this a small letter. It's just conventionally better. We can save that. So if we're trying to fetch for our overview here, we shouldn't have any issue. So the whole point of this is that if we go to the one already deployed, okay, when we're trying to fetch in. We're trying to fetch in like in like the main page. Well was fetching for this these things. We're fetching for this. That's the title. It's fetching for the overview. And we're fetching for the date published. So it's about that we're able to you know test the query in our um in this like playground and then see if it's working. So like I said, we're, just, we're searching for what title overview. Um the date that it was published so we'll just use created at and if you're wondering how that is done because how do you know what you're trying to query for if you, if you query for everything okay you would you can just see you can see here uh let me see if i can find it technically if you look through maybe this is a bit bulky let's try for mental out. All right, so we can see that if we're trying to get the date when we actually, you know, create fetch the date, we can see that it's saved as created at. We're trying to get the title to the overview, it's saved as as these things. We're trying to get the assets and trying to get the image and number of the main image in this log. We can see what we we can see what we're trying to use to get it. So just I'll just go on. Let's just go back and, and let's let's use programming. So since like that's what we're doing. So um programming. Be careful of spellings because it won't create anything if your spelling is wrong. So let's check that out. I get that wrong. Right. Okay. So I'm just gonna paste it. So so now we can get when the date was that's it created at and each would also have a title and an ID rather. So you want to get the ID. Um you also want to get the image because you can see that we're fetching the main image. So we're going to write main image here. And what we're trying to get is the main image and the asset URL. So the main image, okay, asset URL. All right. So that is similar. Was okay. okay, this is a drawn error. Okay. So let's let's check that out. So you can see that it's actually giving us exactly what we want and let's not forget to set our slug 
to search for our slug. So here we can see that we have our title, we have our overview, we have our slug, we have our ID. We can put this up. We have our ID, we have when it was created, and when let's see if you add URL. Let's see, let's try to add the URL for example. And let's paste it. It's going to create no because it's nothing like that. Well, that one's not structured anyway. Okay, so So we can just fetch that. So this is exactly what we're trying to fetch. This is what we're going to fetch in our first page. All right. So let's go ahead and you know copy this, and we're going to go to our code and paste it right there and try to fetch. You see, it's not so it's not so complex when you think about it. So when we go back to our front end folder. What we'll do, let's go to our page, our programming, and let's go to our page.csx. So just right above here, what we want to do now, what we'll do now would be to, we're going to make use of link, we're going to make use of images. So let's import our link from next. And let's import our images, image from next. All right. Okay. So next is that we're going to create an asynchronous function. And yeah, we're trying to get our data. So we can just name it get data, for example. And thereafter, we're going to you know put our constant in the query. And um using the template strings, we're going to paste our code. That's almost all we're doing. So next is that we're going to come just right here. I'm going to write um constant data and then we're going to use our await since we're already making use of async and make use of the client and we're going to we're trying to fetch that i don't know what's going on why is it again we're trying to fetch don't piss me off please we're trying to fetch client we're trying to fetch we're trying to fetch the query okay all right and then we want to return the data. Okay. So now this is going to drop an error. So we have to create um let's create a new folder called lib. So this should just be right in our app folder. Okay. So we're just going to set up a few like things that we're going to need that are paramount so it doesn't keep throwing up errors. Okay. So one of the first things we're going to look at in a library folder would be let's create our interface. So we're going to do our interface dot yes. And just right in the interface here. We're going to export, we're going to create interface for programming and for mental health. So you see that these things here, we have to like create their types, specify their types. And you know, we're using TypeScript. So yeah, we're just going to start with export interface programming. And we're going to give a title. Our title, our title is a string. And our overview to is a string. Our content can be any. Our ID is a string. Our slug is, we can put it in our slug, that's the current slug. We're going to be more specific when we're trying to, you know, when you click on a particular link it should or a particular post you you should take you to the page of that specific post so that's the purpose of current here so also going to specify that it's also going to be a string and there are so um our created art would also be a string and our main image too would also be a string all right so we can see we have to say title overview content id our slug our url um, we will need the URL, the, the created um string, the created add string, the date is also a string, the main image, 
um base we made many made base string because well, you know what you're converting that string to I was nothing wrong just right now. Or converting that string to be um a so converting to the image that it's going to be. Okay, I'm ready to see what's what's wrong. We didn't we didn't get any error. Like that's that's kind of, that can be creepy you know, like but you just walk now, so why did you change your mind? Okay, I see where the error is. So let's do this instead. And let's current string. So we're gonna save that. And let's uh, we're not done. So we're just going to do this again. And here we're going to do that for mental load. So yeah. This should be a capital letter. So we we are basically have the same thing for both of them. Alright. So let's go to if we go to the if we come over sorry if we come over right here. Have you ever wondered how 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 are we going to connect the how are we going to connect the our uh, CMS to the front end? So most times these things are distributed via an API. Okay, so with Sanity, we can. We can get this this API that we're being that's being distributed. So we're going to go to our front end project profile, front end here, and we're going to create a in our lib folder. We're going to create a folder called sanity dot dot yes. All right. And then first we're going to import the create create client. So imports create clients. <sighs> so you create client from next sanity. So this is quite clean straight because it's not important. It's not it's not We've not we're yet to download it. So you can to have more info about it. You can come over here and let's search for npm next sanity. Okay. And we can see uh, we can see we can we can read more about it here. You can see what it's all about. So if you search it up, um sign a client for next year technically. All right, so basically this this is what it's all about. So this is somewhat what we're going to do, make use of. So I'm just going to um go over here and take this and just we're going to see into our front end to forget and that's where we're installing this. Or we should have this um red wiggles gone. So we can see that it's done installing and we can see that those that um stuff is gone. So next up, what we want to do now is we're going to create uh, a project, a concept for our project ID. So this is not our product ID. How do you get our project ID? If you go to your um sanity, yeah, which is in your you know your sanity folder, you already have okay, actually, you already have your Project ID there. So just go back into the sanity.ts that we created and just paste it there. Thereafter, we're going to also do that for our data set. And from what we saw, our data set is production. production. So do that for production. And also, the API version we're using, we could just put the date. You can use any date, but I would make use of this. You can search more about the API version. All right. And next thing is to export the fully constant that was declared. So we're going to export and create client. So we're going to export the project ID, the data set. What's this? So yep, 
the API version, the API version, version. So the use CDN will be true. So technically, the use CDN does technically helps us to, you know, helps us to is like the C it's it's it helps us. It's, it's used for our database, so we don't always have to like use the API basically. So yeah, we can just have this as true. Yeah. So we can save this up and we're sort of all set. Yeah. Alright. So I think that's all. So we can go back to our interface and save it right there and let's go back and make some changes here. So what we're not doing now is to import that client from uh from the folder that we had declared it in. And that folder was uh should okay. And we can see that hold on, we can see let's not make a mistake here. Okay, we can see that it seems to be all gone. And instead of this, let's do it as this. Okay. And yeah, post set. Okay. So that's that's the first part. So now we've been able to fetch the data. Now let us render it. That's the next thing we want to do. It was render it. So now that's something I observed. And start when by the time you deploy your project, there seems to be an error or a delayed response. Like for example, if I if I post a blog now, I ought to like whoever people are, they ought to like see the post immediately. So I noticed that when I first deployed it, that wasn't happening. So a solution to that would be export. So I'm going to use a revalidate revalidate. Okay. And we're going to set it to be 60. So basically, it revalidates the page every 60 seconds, perhaps for a new post. Okay, so we can just put it here. Revalidates the page every 60 seconds. All right. So next up is us trying to fetch it. Okay. Now, we already created an interface for programming. So what we'll start by doing is to try to get that interface because we're going to make use of it in our next stuff. So we're going to say um, import programming from the lib interface. So going forward, so going down here, so we're getting, since we're making use of an async function, we have to turn this into an async function. So we're going to now do our export. So this will now be export default. Okay, let's do an async function. I prefer writing it this way. And then um this function, async function, and then we have programming. Okay. Let's go to the end and let's remove this and let's go back up. So this right. and this okay so yeah so next thing we want to do here now will be um okay so now we're doing a const we're going to um put this and then we're going to use our await and we're trying to get the data so what we're doing now is that we're getting the data as that for programming so we're going to wrap this this Will be in its own bracket so we're getting this okay as programming and which is like an array of number of things okay um, i'm still questioning why i'm getting an error here Okay, um, guess I'm going to this for So if, let's just see. So you don't make a mistake and you're solo someone I did. So the reason why I'm getting the error because there's a duplicate identifier 
programming so like we have two names this and this so that's sort of a conflict so we can name this as programming page so there's no confusion okay so that's oh, that's that's clear all right so we've got that sorted out so so next thing now is let's render it okay so this is where we have all our programming posts and we're going to what we're doing is that we're going to have it just right there beneath it so let's try to get let's try to actually fetch it okay so we can just create a div here and i'm going to just try and fetch a number of things there all right so let's start with our data.map okay we want to map over it i'm going to use data.map that's like the syntax of writing it and what we're trying to do is fetch the programming all right so right here Okay. Oh, well, no, I feel like sometimes I make syntax error when working with this stuff, and I don't want to have that error. So, yeah, we start with data on map, and then we pass in our programming. And the next thing we want to do is we're putting out a new div. Okay. And with this div, I don't know why it's not closing up. Okay. No. Okay. And with this new div, what we're going to write here is we're trying to get the key. Hold on, guys. Something's up. I, sometimes I don't like when <laughs> suggest things for me. So we're doing data on map, all right? And what we're mapping over is our, the, our programming data. So that's what we're going to write the programming here. And thereafter, Okay, I'm mapping over the programming, right? And thereafter, we're coming here. All right, we're doing this. So we're going to write our div. I don't want to make any mistakes. I'm really not in for that frustration. <laughs> so, um, so it's important that whatever you're mapping, you have a key. So yeah, our key would be your programming ID. You guys, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong somewhere. We'll try to figure it out. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So I figured out what the issue was. And that, so let's just take this. And that it ought not to be curly braces. just to be like just a normal, you normal know, straight braces. Okay. So yeah, we'll just create a div. Okay. Bro, what's up? Okay, so right inside the div here, let's create our key property. Okay, and that'll be our programming ID. Okay, right. That so that's the ID that we had specified just right up here. Okay, so going back down. So next up is that we actually want to render what we first and that will involve also mapping. So we'll start off by doing data to the map and yeah, we're going to pass in our programming. And afterwards we're going to then create a div. So it's important that when you're mapping that you have a key. So so this yeah, let's go. So we're going to have a key. Our key will be our programming ID. All right. So next, so what we're trying to get here would then be we can just create our article tag, article element, article. Um. Now let's create a link. And our link here. Will... So I've been videoing for a while and in the video. <laughs> we're fine. So basically, next up, you put the link. And then for the link, you want to, you know, 
um, what do you want to do now? You want to add like an href attribute, really. So, I want to add an href attribute, actually. So, I'm going to put an href on here. We're trying to, we're trying to get our programming. And ensure you add this slot current so you don't have any errors because you're not mentioning that you actually want to go to a particular a specific um, URL. So it's about that you add the current there. And so you can drop some error about um something being dynamic and error about. So then you um want to have the div, you want to have your div, and inside this div, let's put in another div, and yeah, we're going to try to render our uh, images. So I'm going to go to that programming image, dot Im main image, and thereafter we we want to you know put our image tag and inside our image tag we're going to you know put in the necessary attributes such as the let's put our source and our source here will be our programming main image then we put our alt tag and in you know, our alt we'll just put the programming title and thereafter we want to add the width which will be let's give it like five seven fifty and we're going to give a height of about 300. Okay, with that said, another thing we want to do is to actually put in our, you know, our, our title. So we can just go right beneath this div and put in an h2 tag, put an h2 tag, and then we can put our programming title. So we'll come about styling it there afterwards. Then below our link, let's do that for our, uh, Okay, let's add our overview. We should not forget our overview. So just beneath here, we just put the overview. So we're going to have programming overview. Yeah. And I think that's fine. Then also here yeah, we're going to put um let's put another div. So this div doesn't contain uh the date it was published. So I can just put so there yeah, we can just put like a span. Um, yeah, and we're going to put the date pro. So we created that, yeah. So we can just put date published. Okay. So we saved that. So I did add more stuff. So let's check this. So I did, I had more, I uh, added more stuff to the programming so it's taking a well i don't know i think okay i had to restart the server at some point okay so if you've liked the video so far please don't forget to like share and subscribe give it thumbs up give me ideas on what you would like me to do suggestions things i'm doing wrong things i'm getting right i appreciate everything good bad criticism i i i'm, I'm pretty much calm with it okay so I don't know why things taking so much long. It's taking so long. So um let's just do this. I feel this shouldn't take so much time now. Yeah, so it's taking so much time. Alright. So now you get the error that we've not done is now config.js. So what we need to do is go into our next JS file and go just yeah. And we have to, so whenever you're trying to use like so-called foreign properties or foreign elements in your next JS, you have to configure them. So configuring them well, right here, images, okay? And what we want to do is I want to add a domain. So let's we'll write domain. And thereafter, we would want to put in the URL of whatever, of like the site we're trying to configure, Um, my pardon. This should actually be um curly braces. So let's write domain and let's write domain and um this would be like this let's write this the link. So technically how do you know what to write? When you come back here, you see it saying oh C D A T D. So you're gonna copy this and put it yeah so we're just going to use that and just put it right here i'm going to save don't worry about the old red thing it's going so like if you're trying you can see examples from um copilot so if you're trying to add like more stuffs so just go ahead and do that all right so i'm just going to take this away like this and um let's see the program should be resolved so let's reload that so we can see that it should be resolved 
um stay on the earth somewhere it was that of such a so let's give it time we still reloading so let it let's reload so while that's happening let's try to add a few more stuff to our 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 content repository so um right here um okay let's do that let's do for mental health because afterwards we're going to start building something for mental health so i'm just going to um just take a sneak peek for something here and let's say what can i do something okay hang in there this is a good one so um i'm just going to copy and paste this so i'm just going to take this paste it somewhere here and we can just regenerate this and um let's take this put it here too so i'm going to upload an image i'll probably upload this pigmented out then let's look for content and let's put in a um, few content here speak all right so yeah i'm just gonna put that and yeah just right yeah we can just go ahead and publish it okay so that's been published let's add one more for both of them so i come back let's see the dots i think uh so let's pick the dots and so we can just i'm just going to copy this and this so let's just go ahead here and let's go ahead and write the dots and let's just let me copy the content and paste the content um let me generate this log and yeah let's paste the overview so yeah we can just pick any image and actually put something something calm and let's put this all right let's do the same for so while this is loading we can just push the publish button just want everything to set up okay all right so let's keep click on publish let's add one more for one more for our programming too so i'm just i'm just going to go here to the programming and i'm just, just going to try to add let's see what can we talk about now let's see there's a better perspective towards debugging so i'm just going to copy this copy this copy this so yep just let's just create a new one and let's just paste it just right here so just upload an image and i can upload any of this generate this okay we don't have a title yet so let me put in a title um this and let's put in a good overview and that could be this and let's generate this log so since all is done let's publish it so let's go back and check up on what's happening here so um long chalk film i feel uh, it's probably some loading errors and all those things so nothing's showing much yet so um it should be working now programming as you can see we can see our post so like i said we do a revalidate of 60 seconds so let's give it about 60 seconds by the time we're back perhaps we should see our new post yeah so all right so let's do some styling now have you looking so platonic so let's come to this Steve wrapping our stuff and we'll start by you know start by giving a grid so why are we making a grid because it's actually in a grid form okay so we're going to put grid i'm going to put a grid of two and then we want the background to be transparent and we want the lg to be grid and we want it to be four so we want the grid to you want the grid to take up our four columns so it's going to all automatically become rep responsive itself too so we're giving a gap of eight pick um the padding at both left and right eight and py three as padding on top and bottom we're giving it to be three so let's kind of save it let's see do we have any changes right now and we'll go back to check it out um not much not too much seems to be done should i load okay so we can see that we have this this actually showing all right so that's a good a good attempt so actually the whole point of the four is that when you add one more it's actually going to take up the space all right so we can see that this this, this style of stuff is looking all um tattered. all right so next stop is that let's actually try to style um our image and let's make our image look sort of better all right before going there let's go to 
let's go to our key here and let's 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 try and style the um the card so to say so let's give it a background of white a background of white and a shadow or oh, before i go there let's just let's add some padding to it and make going to make it rounded i'm going to round the lg shadow xl i'm going to give it over so when over over it wants to give it like a translate a translate y um three so the point of this is that it's actually going to like go up but this won't work because when you use the translate without the minus it actually okay i haven't saved it so it's actually going down so if you come back here you can see that okay it's not it's not it's not showing any effect you can see that's going down and actually we want it to go up and you can see that it has this abrupt movement so another thing we can do is that it should actually add like a slick sliding so you can do the over scale so do the over scale and give about 300 and give a duration of 300 so I set this up. Let's see what's happening. You can see that it's actually going up, and we see that. We well, see this. This is too long, so we're going to find a way to go about that. But real quick, let's let's just follow it accordingly. Let's do that. Let's start up the image. So yeah, we're going to give the for our images. We're going to make it object cover. So we're going to put this right here object cover okay and you can see it's taking it from where really and you can do um rounded lg and give it a border and border grid to be gray okay and give about 300 500 okay so that's that's pretty calm so next thing that let's try and style up this um class name okay so let's give a class name yet i mean the h1 and that'll be fonts of bold let's make it bold let's make the text to be sort of large and over when over we want the color to turn all purple so we can give it violet and um violet could be violet could be about 500 all right that's um how the ex the deepness of the color basically so we also give it run duration the duration of 300 and is in in out technically all right so um if we save this let's see what's happening so we said we have this so um no it's, it's not it's not taking effect so let's go back i've said it right font bold transition so why is it not taking so let's try reloading it i thought so i should have this out for good okay yeah we can see it's looking better all right next up this is not looking so good so what we'll try to do now is so we can reduce the number of lines that we have in this programming overview and how we can go about that is that we we'll make use of line club so we'll just go about and say i want to reduce this about two lines we're about so we can just say line clamp two so let's put oh no oh no 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 no, no. okay so this will not line clamp two and we can save that and if we go right just here we can see it should take its changes right now i don't see why i always have to reload this stuff it shouldn't be so you can see now it's been this has been achieved so we can add a bit of um let's add some spacing there about so we can just give it like a margin top of about four and we can also give um the title a margin top of about um it so if we save that let's just add like the real spacing between each other so we can see it's looking better so this date published is not looking right so let's convert it into something that makes sense and how we go about that is that we can just i'm going to take this and just like copy this all right so we can just put new dates okay and then i show a uh, new date and we can do um we'll just try to refer to what we're trying to convert to so this is going to put put it just right there and what we're going to we're going to use the, this okay and then we want to split it and pull once we move that t and this is so 
if you save it, you can see that we have the what it did here is like from that T to the end, we can split it and all that is gone. So we can make we can make the fonts a bit bold because add a class name. We can make the font to be maybe semi bold now. And if we save that, we should have that up here. So yep, that's pretty calm. All right, so I think it's looking like it. Is it? It's looking like it. All right. So we're just we're going to do the same thing for our for our mental health actually. So nothing much. So what we're going to do is because we already have a template set, we're just going to take all these, copy it. All right. Be careful so you don't make mistakes, and let's head over to our mental health page, and let's paste it just right below here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to change up a couple of things. So like we did before, we'll get to change this to an export statement. So what we want to do now would be to let's let's import mental health. Okay, we're going to import that, and so we're going to use uh, export default. Okay, let's take this. This um my other thing we want to do here will now to be okay so let's so so like we made use of an async function at the other side also going to make use of an async function here okay and right async function Right. So let's so let's turn this as mental aid page. Oh uh, so let's go and yeah and let's do that. So we we're not going to stress so much. So you know right here we let's go back and just use the same thing. We're just going to copy this um from here and let's just go right up here and let's take it back to our mental health and just, just paste it here. So this should rather now be mental health and this let's also import the client okay from that so we have that sorted out what else are we going to just use our link and let's import our image all right so we are almost set and almost ready the next stop will be actually to put in to put in our const data just right here so i'm going to use const data is equals to our way to get our materials so that's what we're going to do so we're trying to get our data so instead of programming you'll just change this to mental health mental health mental health and yes to be mental health Yet to be mental old, and I could just copy and paste the stuff. So just take take this and just copy and paste like I said, copy and paste like I said, copy and paste like I said, copy and paste like I said. Yep. So almost set. Are we set? So let's go through everything. So we seem to be okay. I'm going to save this up, fingers crossed, and let's hope that everything goes as planned. So let's head back to our website and let's open up our mental health page. So I'll just right click here and let's open it in a bit. So let's wait for that to load. My fingers are still crossed. Hopefully, this should be working because sometimes that copying, copy and paste, they can just be like, oh, it didn't work. Okay, yeah, it worked. Good. So we have that set. So next stop. So just so just add as much um stuff as you want to add so next up i'm going to let's work on the subscribe button okay we can work on this um recent post part um but i think i'll hold on with it so let's get a busy setup so that's what we'll do now is to work on this subscription part and how are we going to go about that so you can see that first it's a parallax error. I'm sorry, <laughs> there's a parallax error. It's parallax effects. I'm an engineering student, so I think uh, those things go into my head. All right, so um, okay. So what's next? All right, 
what's next would be that we're trying to create a subscribe component so what we're going to try to do now is to create a subscription component so can let's go over to the component folder i'm going to close this um let's go to our components here and we can create a new file called um let's call it a mail form dot csx okay and here we're going to um, put in whatever we want to put in. So let's do um, the RAFC component and RAF. Sorry, some print. I got a new phone. Okay. So let's save this and let's go into our programming file just at the end. So towards the end, we're just going to you know try to just Im import it. Okay. So then let's go back up here and then try to import it. So import import mail form. And we'll do the same thing here, import mail form. So you can just so let's just just go ahead to the bottom here and just just try to do something like this. I want to finish something. I'm not okay. So let's just go just right here, yeah, and let's do uh okay. We can actually just put the mail form there and see the effects. Do the same thing here. Put the mail form just right below here and see the effects. So if we go back to check it all out, see that it's something that we see as we for it. Sorry, it's not a loaded one. So I said the new form here. So that's where we're going to be styling it up. Okay. So how we're going to start with that is that let's start. So because it's a parallax effect, you see that we have a fixed background. All right, we have a fixed background. So starting off from there, I'm going to come here and let's wrap this up in a div. Okay, and we're going to paste it right here. So let's give this a style and let's give it a class name. Want to put the text at the center. Want the text to be black. Want the margin at the top to be 18. Want the background to be fixed. And we want the background to be the mental. What is it? This programming. So let's make it programming. I think called the programming banner, so to say. But uh, I'm not wrong, and we want the program to cover. So if you try to save this up and let's go back and check it, we might have some a sort of. So you can see that we have that image there. All right. Okay, we have that. You can see we have that spiral access. Just try. We're going to work on it. And we're going to make it a whole lot better. So you can make the sixteen and a whole lot bigger. Okay. So let me can go we can just copy this and do the same thing at the mental health. So just paste it here. But instead, what we're going to write here will be the mental health banner. So you set that up, you should also get the same similar effect just right here. Okay. So we have that new form showing in there. So yeah, we want text. The other program we want it black because we already we want it white because we already have like a black black background. So let's go into here and actually start um so start um making it make, making it look like it makes makes sense. All right. So um oh, yeah, we're going to make use of use clients because we might making use of clients components. Um, let's come over here and use this client, okay? Um, so I just let's just make this into brackets and this other. Uh, All right, so how are we going about this form? 
all right, all right, all right, all right. So going about this, what we're going to do is let's try and create a Mailchimp account. So let's let's start with that. So um. So creating a mutual account, so let's come here and let's do this. So let's do a mutual. And let's try to log in. Oh, let's sign up. Let's sign up for those that don't have. So um let's start up by signing up. So I'm most likely going to be using a free plan so i'm going to pick up the sign up free yep so um i'm using all my emails um stop saying that's nothing okay let's use this one So let's check my email for so we're just going to activate it and so yeah our mochi has been set up. So tell us about it about self. I'm gonna put this I think I feel like I've used this a lot. Uh, I'm just gonna put A R U B codes because oh, well, this is U B codes. Um, okay. All right. So let's click on next. Oh, I've done this before, right? Oof. So yeah, so let's go on next. So um we can speak to anyone I want to be on my list. Oh so, uh, okay. Let's just keep going next. Um let's just keep can I skip all this and just go in. This is an option. Just, it's not commercial speed keeping on this. So just keep going and then um So basically, yep. So we don't have any URL at the point, moment, so we'll just put that. So, like I said, we'll continue with the free version. And okay, they're preparing our account. So let's wait up while this is loading. So first of, um, I'm not bothered so much in the styling, but the whole essence is to teach you how to implement the functionality of implementing the subscription box, rather, a subscription channel. <laughs> so I'm sorry. So we open to actually try to inculcate a subscription, you know, um, functionality, and it's not so hard. I I I somewhere I struggle with it, but I'll go answer the concepts now. So um, let's go to audience. I want to believe so let's go to sign up forms and there you click on embed so let's click on embed form create an embedded form so technically um what you've been making use of so what i would say is that style your style your stuff the way you want it to be so let's continue and there yeah, they give you a code okay so just copy this code and paste it right in your code so let's go there and let's paste it in our code Season code, so I can just come here and let's just paste it here. 
So technically, what I did was to tell ChatGPT to convert all this code for me to React or JSX, basically. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really go to stress. I did try to change one or two things and all. So I've technically done everything for you. But one of the things I will be taking out for me would be this, okay? Because I think I need this. All right. So I'm going to take. I've got. I've I've put the source code in the description, so in I've put the source code rather in a gist in a GitHub gist. So um, do ensure that you just go and copy. So what 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 you should be careful is that when you actually try to get your embedded code, you are actually going to be giving your own unique link. So when time you copy and probably paste it, ensure you paste your unique link here. I'll write it there. Paste your unique link here. So what I'm just going to do right now is just come over and just paste the code here. Okay. Okay, so I'm just I'm try doing this again. Okay. So we've we've done the budget. the reason why I don't want to remove this, okay. We find a way around the script tag. So, concerning the script, so I've put in all the stylings that you need, so you need not bother yourself. You can just walk around, walk around it. So, um, I've also um told ChatGPT to help me also walk around the script tag. So all of this we said, but I feel like there's a problem somewhere. There's a problem. There seems to be an issue. I don't. I'm trying to get what the issue is. I'm not, I ought not to have this error. So. Another thing you want to ensure will be that um so this we have in this error here and what I did so I'm going to use a quick fix and I'm going to disable disable the rule for the entire file which we've done that so we are all result so just save that and we'll check our code so what what's key here what's key here is your whatever you have here you want to ensure that whatever you have in your action correlates to what you have in your cms so before we get to so just ensure it's the same like where your where your action is going to so i'm just going to ensure it's the same and just like copy here so yep yeah. so ensure that the same which i think they are All right, so there you save okay? So I'll just save that and let's go back. So let's check our code to see how it looks like. So going to, going here, we scroll down, we see that we have this implemented already. So you see, um, let's try this, this. Okay, so we're having this issue and we're going to, if you notice that when we tend to type something, it's not working. So let's try to fix that. So, um, okay. try, you can try to take away the use kind. Let's see. So I'm just going to try to debug that and see where the issue is coming from. So what I'll do now would be to go into my um the file that we're in that's programming and let's go up and check. So what I'll do here would be to add use clients. So if I save that up and go back to check it, hopefully it should work. So I'll just reload it. So I've done the major styling. The styling here isn't um, so much of a big deal. And I believe you'd understand the old parallax effects now going on at the back. So you can see now it's working. So when we subscribe, we get the uh, note that says thank you for subscribing. So you can see that the functionality is working. So we're going to um, check that too for our mental health. 
and to avoid that same error we're going to come over here and you know put in just go just right at the top and put in the our uh, use client so just going to come here and put in our use client it is a dash to me i don't think it's a dash is it Okay, so that shit. So you have to be careful. So use clients. I'm gonna save that up. And if you go back to check it, let's go back to check it here. So just right here. Um we can put in anything. Um, sorry. So that's right here. I'll put in a C. And let's subscribe. So as you can see, thank you for subscribing. So you guys, our subscription stuff is working. And thereafter, let's go to, let's actually check where we get to see who and who subscribed. So I'll just go over here. No. So we can we can get to see our audience. So to see the people who have subscribed, we can just simply go to our audience dashboard and they will see the names of people who have subscribed. So this just seems to simplify a lot for us. So you see we have three subscribers and um we can view them by clicking on view contacts. And then we would, would see them. All right. Sorry, it's a bit slow. So you can see the people that have subscribed technically. Okay, okay. So moving on, we're done with the functionality of the um. This thing. Now, now let's add our recent programming posts. And another thing you'll observe is that at this side we have the related posts. And we want to add the functionality such that when we click when we click on a post, we want to get reference to that page, and thereafter we would go about the comment. So now what we want to do is to ensure that our slog, our redirection to our blog post actually works. So currently I don't think that works. So if we click here, we it won't I don't think it will work. So let's see. You see, we get this blank page and this page is not found so how do we do then dynamic um page routing <clears throat> how to go about dynamic page routing in i don't know where this where this green lights are coming from uh the things that they are not exactly errors just some weird stuff hold on a bit Why <laughs> something's up, man? So I don't know why I'm having this. It's not an error, it's just I think it's an excellent stuff. Let's let's see what it's all about. Okay. I'm just going to disable it for the entire file. We'll save that. Okay, so technically that's it. So right, like I said, let's work on the fetch recent posts. And let, okay, I think we should start with the slog first. Which I should go about. Okay, let me see. Let's start with the dynamic rendering. So when you want to dynamically um put a page in next years, because you know we can have multiple pages with the slog posts that we're putting. So just right inside here, we're going to create a new folder. And we're going to call it put it inside um a new folder put inside um this bracket and write slug so therein we're going to do our page dot tsx okay the same goes for mental i'll just write it create a new folder put um call it slug and just write inside there would do a page dot tsx and they're ready okay starting off with um i think 
we could go with the mental health is already there. What we want to do, remember, we're dynamically fetching all of this, okay? So starting off, we want to import our... Uh, want to import our uh, mental health, the interface that we have created. So we'll do that. And then there's something we're going to make use of, and that's the portable text. So this just up, up, enables us to render um, our text. So if we do npm portable text React, so it's just uh, it enables to render our text and other rich components. So So you can see here, yeah, so just copy the um npm just right here and sanity block context react. Alright, so let's just copy this. I don't think that is copied. Let's do that manually. What's going on? Ah, I think some of the glitch. Alright, so let's copy that and just move. Um, to a terminal, let's create a new one, and we're just, we're just going to cd into that terminal. I just want to ensure I'm recording. Okay, let's cd into front end and let's paste it and let's install it. So, that is installing, let's go about other things. So, um, We're also going to import our clients. So we're going to import our client from that. So another thing we want to do in our lib folder will be that for our sanity image. Okay. So what we're going to do now is that we want to to be able to view images to in our blog post. So in our in that lib folder, we'll create a for a file called sanity image url.ts okay and right here we're going to we're going to import um import an image builder from our sanity url so let's check if we have that installed if you don't we would have to do that manually by ourselves okay so go let's go at the back and search for npm sanity image URL so we have that here and can read more about it npm send it to URL I'm just going to copy this and it's already copied so add one paste it right there so let's add back to our sanity image URL and we're going to wait for that to install so what another so go back to your mental health please the slog and let's import so this time let's import our let's import our portable text. So we're going to import the portable text. Text. Okay. This would now nah, this would be our portable. Okay, we can see that sure enough. Alright. So this is done installing. So let's add back to the sanity image and let's try to create the functions that we need to having installed our sanity image url so let's begin to import it so to import our image url builder you know um image url builder from sanity url and then we're going to we want to import our client from sanity And next up, we want to um, let's create a constant for our builder, and then that would be our image URL builder, and then we're going to pass in our client there. So thereafter, we want to create a, a function to export it. So we're going to um, export function URL for, and give it a source any.
and we're going to return builder and image source so i seem to get it okay and we're also going to save it up so we go back to our mental health the slug page we can from there you know start actually get to work on a couple of things so from here we can then import put our url for that from where we created it okay and having done that let us import some other important things so let's import the image we want to, we're going to use image let's import um link all right and we are set okay i don't know why this is here so now we're also going to create an async function so let's go forward and create an asynchronous function so we're going to say async um, function get data and this time what we're trying to get will be the slug and specify that it's a string okay and thereafter just in here we're going to create like what we did here the other place so i'm just going so what makes this one different is that when we create our constant we're trying to what we're trying to query okay the, the here's the syntax for trying to you know query a specific thing so come here and we're going to put in like the so we want to get the type mental health and the current slug and put it here as a slug okay so what we're trying to get here now from in our page in our post page if we go ahead to check here um if we go ahead to check i think yeah we go ahead to check here in each specific page we are we're trying we're, what we're trying to fetch is the image you know the title the date the posts so those are the things we're going to actually those are, those, those are the queries we're trying to make so like i said the title the um the content the date which is what we saved as created we so as created at the um the main image um and that will be the assets we're going to put it like this sorry the what's that the main the main image all right and we're going to set it to the first one so what about this this should yeah we'll, we'll click on we click on no so like the use of for the data and use it like since we made you await made use of async we're making await and then we're going to return the data okay so thereafter is what we want to do next would be to so let's go ahead and create a function so we're going to do our export default function export default async functions with specific that gets spelling well okay So extra default mental load. So let's we'll call this mental load slug page. Okay. Mental load slug page. All right. And um in here, let's define our params. That's what putting our parameters, and then we will want we're going to specify that the parameters we're putting in as a slug, and that slug is a string. Okay, so is the type string? And outside here, let's start working our function. We're just going to see our const data. Going to data, 
like we did in our previous phase, because so let's do the await. So, and we're all trying to do is to get the get the data, okay? And that's the trying to yeah we're going to try to get the slug, and we're getting everything as the main alert um referring to, yeah it says on what's right up here, okay. So next we're going to make use of our portable con portable context. So this is just for us to render those block components. Okay, so portable text component, we're going to define its types. And yeah, we're going to start with image. And for our image, we want the value. And this value will have the type any. Okay. And we're going to pass it out like this. Sorry. Just like this. And just right in here, we're going to put our image. We'll put our image. Um, yeah, so we're going to create this. And just inside, we're going to pass in the properties. Uh, what, what should we do? So we're starting with the source. And like we did for the URL for. So we're trying to get the value. And that's the URL. Okay. Thereafter, we're going to add the alt. And we're just going to put image. Send it right now. And we're going to put, give the width of 800, height to of 800. Or whatever, then we will also come around to style it. But for now, let's just leave it like this. So, so that's just right below here. So we're going to go on to actually trying to work with with that, like the main component. So let's 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 go on. So next thing for us to actually return it. Oops, what's that? Okay, and let's just put an MC. The um the tag there, and we're going to create a div. Um, and let's first let's try to just see if we're actually getting anything. The data type. So, um, let's try and work with the new date. So let's try and fetch the date. And we we'll put the like we did before. We're trying to you know, we don't want the date wasn't coming in the right format. So we're going to put it in the right format. And um, we're going to try to get the image. After all, we'll go ahead to actually style it properly. So now I'm just going to do something rough. And our source would be um, the other main image. And let's just add the alts. Let's put anything random. Let's add the width. And let's say we make it like 750. I it's about 300. It's in the random. And so I'm um, also going to put a portable text. Yeah. So this is going to put portal. So portable text which is self closing. And we're going to pass in the value. And the value be data that content. And the components. Would be the portable text component. So I'm seeing an error here. Where's that coming from? URL. We're getting an error from URL. So well, it could probably be that maybe we didn't put it up somewhere. Uh, okay. I don't see why it's not picking up. So the thing is, we tried to we um pass it up to here. So um one other thing I'll do try to do is to let's go to our mental out and let's create let's pass the URL as a string. Just say that should work. Hopefully, I think we can. I think we can do the same thing. 
at the bottom too. And we can also come here and press the URL as a string. Okay. Um let's save that up. Let's go back here. Once again get in the error. So let's go to our let's go to our main mental load and let's let's add the URL to And let's see how we still get in the error. We still get in the error. Let me save this up. Let's come back here. So I'm trying to figure out what might be wrong. Because I think we've passed in necessary stuff. And we're pointing it at a URL. But yeah, we're getting that. It's, it doesn't exit on type. So in T source image or be other. Um, let's try copilot. What does he have to say? Okay. So the URL exists on the type. To figure out, I would modify the code to use URL method for the image where I return by the full value. So before I accept this, I'm going to go back to check what we did here. So it's saying something about us not um, probably using it, the URL here. Yeah. We use the URL for. Okay, let's let's put this put the source here, and let's save this up. Okay, and okay, so we can see that it's all sorted out now. Yep, so that's that sorted out. So we can save this up, and fingers crossed. Um, let's see. Oh, by the way, I shut off my video because um the the power is out and that's right at my end. So there's no point of putting out the video when my face isn't too, so clear. Okay, so um, it's just it's old and a bit. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I hope this works. All right. Okay, still not showing anything. You still don't seem to get anything. Something's up. I guess you see what I'm saying. Okay, now if you see, look at this URL. I made the typographical error some more. So let's go to our uh, page, the text. I think the error should come. I think, where did we do the routing? Oh my, oh my, oh my. We did the routing somewhere. Um, okay, let's go to That should be, that should be in the main. That should be here. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Yeah, yeah. This should be made that old. Okay. So I'm going to save that up and let's go and give it a try again. So let's go back. Oops. So let's go click this. Fingers crossed. I hope this works. Sticking edges, man. <laughs> So I was in the other Oh yeah. So yeah, we see that we get our content showing. So let's style this up and let's make it look sensible. Um the in case you're wondering, the uh let's, let's try to inspect this. The text is like somewhere up here as like the title. It's actually showing. If you try to say, you know, just look at your element right here, it's actually going to it's actually showing somewhere somewhere up there so we're going to start it up to show right so um with that let's let's do that so like i said this is just some rough stuff so i'm just going to copy cut this all right let's move on so starting with the first div um let's let's give it a class name And this is the sense that, so why we're doing this first is, um, we're later on going to add the related post. All right, so we want to put it as a div. So what am I trying to say? Uh, if we go back to the one I already did, we have to, we have to, 
um, primarily two things showing. We have this and we have these two rows. So I'm going to divide them into two. So this I'm going to call this like the first part. And this first part here would signify um, this part that's here. And I'm going to have, so here I'll just put in a div, okay. And just, just go down, B, and here I'm going to do the second part. So we're going to put here like the second, the second part, okay, if that's, okay. So this will try to help us to divide the stuff into two, that's this and this. All right, so I could just put here posts. And I could just put here recent posts. Okay, so let's start this up. So that is so yeah, we want to have a grid, and we want the grid to um to be we'll put a grid called one. So that it actually works. Okay, and on the last screen, we're going to use the grid column. For twelve, all right, and we're going to give it a gap of twelve. Okay, so starting off from here, from the first part that we had, starting off from the first part, starting up from the first part we have, we want to give this a D, a class name, and want to give it a margin at the top of of 24 because you know the earlier we said that the title and all we're not showing so we want to give it enough space and as well to make it show so the last screen we want to um give it a span eight and we want to give a co span of one component of one and we want to center this so we can give it mx auto okay then so we we have that set So, so just right inside here, let's create another div. And with this div, we also want to give it a class um MX auto. So this will, this will contain our title and all. And we want to give it the, we want this text to be centered. So there we're going to put in our title, which is going to be an H1. And let's dial it up and ensure that our uh, is really bold. So give it extra bold. And we want the text to be as large as about 3XL. We want the text to be like 4XL. That's on the medium screen and on the large screen. We want it to be bigger with 5XL. So this this style, this text is going to apply to all. It's going to apply to medium display on a large display. And okay. That's a padding on both sides, equal padding of four. And just right here, we're going to render our title. So we can just put, you know, so just right here, let's render our title. So we can have the data, the title. All right. So we have that saved. So if we try to check it up, um, let's see. Oh, that's coming up. So perhaps I should reload this. Okay, you can see that we're making a bit of sense here. Yeah. And we could add a little bit of padding to the top. Maybe I should make this, should I make this? Um, I want to be sure I'm not making them. Is it 32? I think there's 32. Okay, it's not saved. Make it about 32. I'm trying to get a bit of space up here. I hope it's not too much too. All right, I think that's 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 visible. Uh, okay, trying to get what what was that one that opened? Okay, I think that's that's calm. All right, so let's add on to do the rest. Um, we could, we could give okay. I give that. Okay, we, we can leave this as twenty four. Let's give this a padding at the top, and that'll be like four. So. So we have like 28, say pardon, 28, okay, in total. So, okay, 
That's great. Oh yeah, I'm going to what we're trying to render here would be the would be the date. Okay. So like I said previously, we're going to just try and use what we used the last time. So I'm just going to try to get that. And just paste it right here. Okay, so that's done. Okay. So let's give it a class name. Nope. Yeah. So let's give it a margin top and bottom of two and let the font be bold. Set that up should have that ready. So let's go on and just below here was our image. We did it before, so I'm not, I'm not gonna waste so much time on that. Okay, so yep, that was like I copied it when we were first trying to get the distance. So I'm just take this away, and so we have our image here. Um, let me try to make this look prettier. Okay, didn't do so much work today. Okay, let's just add a class name here then. I wanted it to just everything to just be like vertical. So um we want the object to be cover like we did previously, and we want the edges to be rounded. So we're going to use rounded LG and one give it a border and the border sh color should be gray. And about five hundred that so we want to we want it to sort of be centered. So give it a MX auto. So I think sort of fine. Yep. Okay, yeah, we have that done. Um going forward. Now let's create a div for the now what's what's wrong now? This guy is driving me. Cause this this is the closing div. I I guess see what's going on here. Like what 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 did I do to deserve this? It's complaining that it can't find the closing div, like, but the closing div is just right here. Oh well, see, programming takes patience. So I'll just go right below here, all right, and let's do a div for our content. Okay, so I'm just going to paste that protocol that we did earlier and let's start it up. So, um, if I save that, we can try and see what it's looking like and see where the necessary styles to be applied. So, um, yeah, this is looking okay, isn't it? So I could, you can see this is not looking okay. So let's try and make everything look better. Okay. So, um, let's add a button on top of 16. Um, let's make it padding auto. So like centered. On a small screen, we're going to see we want it to be like about max width. So we're going to add XL there, and on a medium display, we want also also want a max width, and we're going to put full. And then on a large screen, we want a max. Oh, oops! On a large screen, we want a max. Um, I just want to ensure I'm recording. <laughs> it's so frustrating when you've gone so far, and then it's like. What? I've not been recording. It's happened, really, you guys. It's happened. So, um, screen. I think it was about someone's like an hour or twenty six, and no one was twenty six minutes even in this video. So, um, so at medium display we want twenty four, and at large screen we want the PX to be the padding above size to be eight, and the medium screen we want the padding above size to be twenty four. So we want the leading to be eight. We want the width to be seventy percent, and we want the text. So we're going to give it to, to be gray. If I hope it's not too gray. Okay, so let's save that up. So um, I believe we're good to go. Let me see. Is there any is there any, any visible errors I can see? Okay, here's one. Oops. So I put with it. So that should be fine. And let's go ahead and check our code. Okay, seems better. As you saw, okay, this this is what it looks like. So this is like what it looks like. So we have that set. So our recent post ought to be here. 
So let's try to work around getting our recent post. So when it, so before we okay, let's let's just do everything at once. So we're not. I'm I'm thinking of where to go about this. So now let's fetch our recent post. You see, there are many places where we apply the recent post. We apply the recent post here. We apply the recent post in our home page. We apply the recent post also in our programming. So um. Okay, this is not what we're looking for. Uh, so what I mean, we applied the recent post yet too. So we did that for programming posts and we did that for mental health posts. All right, makes sense. All right. So first, let's, I think we should start off with here. Yeah. So we get the old concept and how to, you know, fetch the, the recent programming post and the um, mental health. And everything is happening up here in our main page. Okay. Okay, okay. So we are setting, we're going to try and set a type for, so let's go, let's just go here in our main page. And let's set types for, is our main page? What is that main page? Wow, the code, the code looks so small. I was wondering that. Is this really what's there? All right. So what we want to start with is we're trying to get the post for two things. So let's start by importing the interface for um programming and the interface for mental health. So that is coming from, um, I don't know where it's not auto suggesting. So that will come from our app leave interface. When it's not auto suggesting, there's something wrong. Okay, interface. Oh, uh, okay. Let's go, let's, let's, let's go again. <laughs> so we're trying to get programming. Sorry then. Um mental health. All right. Okay, we have that. Another thing we want to try to get the client and let's make use of our because we're going to make use of our link, so let's import that. And also gonna make use of image, so let's just import that. Image. So this should not be in curly braces, sorry. So um, because we're also going to be making use of our add synchronous function here, um, before we get to that, let's, let's first start off here. All right, so we first want to set our post a type, a post type, which we have to. So we're going to set that for programming or mental health. And then we're going to create our interface which is our, we we'll call it post data. Okay. And here we're going to set our title to the string overview, overview to string, the slog, the string, the ID is a string, the created ad is a string, the um we did one for URL the other time so we just string the main image the string and our content to the string. Alright, so title overview slog ID created at URL main image content. So they are all strings. Okay. So next thing we want to do would be I don't want to do B to create the async functions. Okay. So we're also going to do the same async function and let's do async function. So we're going to get the recent posts. I'm going to set our post type.
Let's do a constant for our, we're gonna, like how we did before. So let's put our templates first. We're going to put the equals to, and let's put our templates through, and let's do our grok query. So um, we're going to put in that type. So it's a bit smaller. Too. Yep. And then we're going to specify the post type that we want. Okay. Put this inside here. Yeah. So um, copilot, please don't confuse me. So we're going to put the post type and close that up. And we're gonna we're gonna put the post type and um we're going to say that also want the creator to should also show. And what we're doing is that we want to show just about four four recent posts because you know when you're working in programming it's counted from zero one to so we're saying the area of zero to three so one two three four so you're just going to show like the four recent so as you update it so based on the order of the date as you update it you know it's going to like change and like like remove other ones so technically that's what we're trying to do here so we're just going to tell them what we're trying to get so we're going to try to we're trying to get the title the overview the slog the um id the create at create at the url the url the main image and also url um the content i think we're set so like we did before let's just pass it out all right and yeah, we're going to use our weight, but this time what we're doing here is that we're going to put this in its own um, bracket, and then we're going to um, get everything as a post data. Post data, okay. And thereafter, we're going to, let's return the data. Okay. So um, what we want to do next would be um, let's do, uh, let's not forget. Oh, let's not forget to put in our exports revalidate. Sorry, it's export const revalidate. Okay, so revalidate a bit. So let's, let's just, I, I'm not sure if you put it here. Let's also put it here. Let's put it here too. So, like, you know, it's this, this, it reduces the delay of rendering when we, um, when we're doing, when we, when we update our post from the um content management system. So um default, so we're going to make this an async function. Because we we can use it in the at all. Okay. Great. So now so to fetch so to fetch um the recent programming posts, here's what we'll do. Um Let's create a constant and just create a spaceship. So we're going to create a constant programming data and then we're going to use the awaits. Okay, so we're going to write await um, get recent posts. And so we want to get the programming. So yeah, we're getting the programming as so on we're going to put unknown and the an array of that as programming. Um we're getting errors. So what was it? We're going to get the recent posts, and we're getting the getting one of programming. Okay. So it's a conversion of type because it's unknown, maybe mistake because. Neither types are usually overlaps with other. If this was intentional, convert the expression to a known first type post data is missing the following properties from the known land. Okay, let's let's check a quick fix. 
All right. Okay. Copilot is the best. So I just, I think I, but at the same time, we need to be sure that we're not, we're not causing problems for ourselves. Let's go on. If, if there seems to any, be any error in our rendering, then we'll go ahead, correct it. Ugh, I'm so dust. All right, so that's that's fixed. So um, okay, let's go on. So now let's fetch for. I'm just copy this here and let's fetch for our mental load. So we're going to create a constant for mental load data. Mental load. I'm just going to do the same thing. So we have that set. So let's go on and let's actually try and render it. So I get, I, let's try and render it. So I want to believe that from so far, you kind of get the concept of rendering at all. So we're just going to do the same thing we did. So let's go right below here. But let's create the text for, um, let's create the text. So we can just come just down over here. Let's create a div and then, um, and the class name and just right here we're going to put our h1 and so so h1 here yeah, we're going to do recent programming posts okay and let's try and start that up leave me alone I mean, <laughs> I mean, a copilot and trying to do something here. So technically, um, we want the font to be extra bold. I want it to be capitalized. So capitalized means it makes a first letter, um, cap in capital letter, so that, that the text be around two XL on all screen devices. Then in medium, specifically, we want it to be three XL, and large screen specifically. We want it to be five XL, okay. I want the text to be centered, and we want the text to be black, and we want the margin at the top to be twelve. So we can save that and let's check how that's going. So we're gonna put it right here. Let's see what's up. I think my battery is down. I'm trying to check my battery. Okay, it's fair. So I don't know why it's taking ages. If you've liked the video so far, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, we have something showing up for us. We have a recent programming post here. So I th okay, I think that's fair. Okay, let's go on. All right, so let's start. Let's just go right beneath this div. Um, let's go right beneath this div and let's create another div. So, uh, we're also going to make this a grid because you know we're trying to make the, it is like rows and all that. Let's make this a grid and put grid uh, with two. And then we want the background to be transparent. We want LG and large screen. We want the grid to display four four columns, and we want to give a gap between each of the card eight. We want the padding on both sides eight, the padding on top and bottom to be three. And so let's try to render that. So we're going to do programming data, and we want to map over that. So we're going to say um programming all right oh no okay so we're mapping over that okay there's an error 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 so it's ought to be um so then another braces another another bracket rather for that so and this is go oh yeah and yeah so, yo, this is what we want to render. So, we're going to create a div and just 
the error keeps showing because we every device have a key. So let's put in our key and put as programming ID. And later on, we're going to come up and style it. So um technically because we're styling a card, it's going to give it like the card. Simple words, it, the card is similar to what we did in our what we did with our what we did with our what we did here. No, not here. Um, where's the programming page now? So, so similar to what we did here. So really, you can. This is how we're going to um change. Okay, so really, we can come here. I really don't have your time right now. So I'm just going to see I'm not seeing any of these on my programming posts. I want to fetch it. Okay, we've done that. So technically, what we can do is just take this, okay, and just take it and just copy that. And we can go back to uh, up here and just paste it, just spin it, yeah. Fingers crossed. Ah, we have errors, we have errors, we have errors. Okay, let's, let's fix that up. But it ought not to be. Okay, okay, stop going for error. Okay, programming. Program. So, yeah, the errors are fixed. So, we could save that and let's see what it looks like. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I hope it works. It's been no time to load. I don't know what's what's the issue. Yay! So you guys, it's actually working. Yeah. So um, okay. Let's go ahead and do. Let's add one more. Let's let's do that for the mental health. So we're really not into different. It's really. It's also. It's 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 going to be. We're going to do something similar. So what we're going to do here would be that we can just actually just take this. Oh, 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 hold on. So I can just copy this and take it to the bottom of this. I want to be sure I'm not. So let's just try and take it to the bottom. I can just write in it here. Yeah. All right. I want to believe so. Let's confirm and open it up again and you can just write beneath here yeah, really. We just paste it here yeah. and instead yeah we're going to write mental health. Mental health. Alright. So we have that set. So let's we can also go back up and let's take this. Okay. So you have to be very careful too. So it's right here. We can we can paste it. Okay. So now what we're trying to do this time would not be our programming data. We're going to call it mental health data. And this would just be mental health. All right. So um for um this would be mental health your id so to fix to fix this all up um we can just like what we did before just go back to our mental health right here so what i'll do is just to take this um what do we do here now okay okay just take this div right here all right, just copy this div right here and let's add back to uh yeah and let's just tick take up this div really and paste it here fingers crossed fingers crossed i hope it works okay let's save that what 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 no so let's save that up and let's see what we have So let's let just reload this. Let's 
So again, if you liked this so far, please do ensure to like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. A lot of effort has been put into this. So okay, we have that said. Rendering right, mental. Can we check the spin of this rental mental health posts? And so we can see it's working fine. Ooh, okay. Now we want to do next up. We want to try and work with the recent posts. So I'm working with the recent posts. Is is it so um the, the related post rather? So what the same like functionality that we did for the related posts be the same that we do for our uh, recent posts. Like what we did for recent posts, what we do for related posts. So um we already set a like a space for it just here where we did we need a div and we said recent posts, right? You don't have to do this, you already have it there. So that was what we did earlier, and so we're going to do just to go back to um where we did our recent post and just try and you know copy this thing and come back to our mental slug and just put it just right below here and go back here and copy this it into mental or and just put it right here. So just put it inside here. Yeah. So next thing is to actually try and style this up in the way that looks good. So let's create two inner divs. So for the first div, we're going to give a class name of LG. I want it to be a column. I want it to span you know, four. Okay. And then we do another call span. And then that will be about one at the margin at the top 24. Yep. So just right inside here, another thing you notice is that when we go back to our side, when we're trying to scroll, this is sort of fixed. So we're going to make use of sticky to make it not like to move. You can see that this can take, can scroll, but this remains fixed. So to go about that, we can go back here and just do at the LG. We want it to be sticky, and then we want it to be relative, and at the top, we want, want, want to say eight. And the margin I want to add in the margin top is just 24. Alright. So um yeah, with this class name, you see that the background is white, right? And we want to give it that shadow effect with that of LG and one rounded LG. Then the padding on the bottom will be about 12 and padding of five. The margin on the bottom of it. So next stop is when we want to write our H3, which will be the related posts. And so, so the, yeah, if you go back, you notice that this it looks like an H rather right? than H R is actually a border at the bottom. So let's start our up. So we want our text to not be too big, just something nice, and the margin on the bottom to be it. We want the font to be semi bold, and we want the border. BB okay, the button bottom to be four. Here come. So let's try to save that up. What's going on? So let me save it. So let's check that. Um, so this is taking time to load. I still have to restart my computer. I was hanging, so I guess that's what's happening. All right, let's go back and continue working our code. What this thinks about itself. All right, so if I go back here, um, I'm going to let's go just beneath there and let's try to map over it. Oh, well, we might not have to go through the stress, so. But then it's one okay. Let's just do it manually, okay? So we're going to do mental health data dot map and yeah we're going to give it a div and let's put that div up so the thing is that every div must have a key and that key here would be the mental health dot id okay and just right inside i want to do give a link and you have this red figures um that those things because you don't have you know the href there so we're linking it to mental l right and there we want to um 
take that to the slug and the current and after we create a div right so now this div we are going to say we want it to be in the center so we do a flex item center and like we want our contents to just be reasonable libre as well and i want the margin on the bottom to be four all right so just inside here we want to you can see that forming up okay so inside they want to put an image just right here just like it is it's like it is here okay so to do that let's just do another div inside yeah and this div is for image and you see that image takes it up a small width so i'll give that width so let's do a class name and let's give that width about 16 and we want the want to give a flex of none all right let's inside there let's do our mental l dot main image and let's put our image stuff there so yeah we're just going to put the source which is our mental l dot image and the width we we'll give it about let's say 60 there about um i think 60 should be okay and give it a height of 62 and then we'll give it a class name when we want it to be aligned properly and so a rounded full i would you give it a rounded full yes um not a bit oh yes so let's give it an odds property okay and you can just write image or you can put the image description or whatever, whatever you can make anything you want all right so we save that up let's see what it's looking like now if we come back here um nothing is showing yet should be reloaded let's try reloading it i'm really just going to give this time i don't okay you can see it showing up here oh yeah we see our image showing up there all right so thereafter let's go on and just beneath this div let's create another div and here we're going to give it a class name here we're going to give it a class name of flex grow and ml of four when you're left okay and that's because um yeah we're going to give it we're also going to put our we're trying to put that's what we're trying to do if we go to the major stuff that we already completed we see that we have the um we have the dates and we have the the title so, so we kind of just want to wrap it in its own stuff all right so we're just going to do a flexible ml um, and um we can see that that date was gray so we'll just give this a color of gray so we want our text to be gray and um the extent is our 500 and we want the font to be sort of small so just give it x xs so let's do a span and here we're going to do like what we did before so we're just going to like um put in the old conversion stuff of the date so we're going to put it just right here and we have our date set all right so beneath the as you can see that beneath the date we have a link so i want to put this link right so just going to go beneath the date and then we'll put a link tag and like i said our rest of tissue unless we put the link so let's put mental health all right and we're going to I think i should just copy this yeah i'm just going to paste it right here okay and yeah let's have a class name of text md and we well, over over it wants it to be purple so we're going to do text purple and an extent of 600 okay and just inside here we're going to put the first the mental title so we can save that up and see what it looks like so let's come over here and we see that it seems to be working fine but then something is up um it ought not to look like this it ought to look like this so let's go back to our code and see what we messed up so we see that it's okay so what ought to happen that this this link is, is in the same like same 
tag which ought not to be so this link ought to be beneath this p tag so let's save that up hopefully fingers crossed fingers crossed i hope it works so yep it did so you can see every related post so if you had more posts we we'll probably see it shows so um let's try adding another post so i'm just going to use based on what i've done before um it's loading it's loading it's loading let's be fast um while that is going on let's see what other future features are working on next okay i'm just going to try and just add a new post now um which one should i use let's do this the mirage of the past letting go so i'm just going to add some i'm just trying to create a new post so so if you add a new post just let's put it here um let's get the overview oh let's put the overview here i'm just gonna you can generate the slug upload the random image um okay that's me um i'm trying to see something that works all right so let's use this and let's try and get the content so just come over here and just try and get the good content and just put it here and yeah we can publish that so you would also see that um i'm going to you also see that this is going to show in our like home page right you see that it's going to populate so i'm going to give it like because we know we revalidated it to about 60 seconds so i'll give it a while and then we'll go back to it so while that's happening what other functionality do we have left so let's try and implement okay the thing is that if you notice we're not doing anything for our programming right so let's try and do that up so we can just go to our mental health actually our programming stock is empty yeah so we're not doing anything so different so pardon me but we can do this you can just copy the code Wait, we really haven't done anything you can just copy the code here and paste it here and we're going to switch up on a few things okay and what what would those things be so rather than using um just we're going to switch up on the words okay so if i go just up here instead of mental health we're going to import programming okay really careful when you're doing this and here the other things are set. So instead of mental health here, we are searching for programming. And um, this will remain the same. This will remain the same. And this time we're getting into this programming. Right? And this time we're getting into this programming. Those are the things we're switching up on. Then rather than having our uh, mental health data here, what we're going to be having instead will be programming will be programming data so what we're going to come over here and do so if you come back here we're going to put programming data like we did on our own page so we're going to do programming data so i'm just going to copy this and replace this um here okay. so this would then we'll call this programming okay so we're just going to copy that and switch that up yeah yeah um yeah 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 and this would be programming too and this would be programming okay so we save that and let's check our programming page and see what we have there so i will just come over here and just open this in a new page and while we can go back here and try to reload it and see if it has populated here. Oh yeah, you can see we have that. Uh, I'm going to ignore this. I think it's something, uh, I'm just gonna ignore that. So we can try going back to our own page and you also see that that's been populated. So let's check this and let's actually open one up. And you can see that we have the four, the recent one that we just added. All right, so let me just remove this. So, um, yep, so we see that it's actually working yep so um it's working let's check this out this will not to be we're supposed to get that for programming not for mental health so let's come back and see what's wrong all 
okay this ought to be programming all right so let's set that up so our recent posts our related posts should actually be that for programming so yay we did it so what's left is let's add our comments okay so for our comments we'll be making use of fastcomment.com so um it just enables us to just you know work with comments so let's start by logging in or creating an account if you don't have one so um okay let me start you up by actually let me start up by should i create a new account should i create a new account all right um i want to create a new account why don't they have to create a new account stuff here um okay, click on get started i'm going to use this okay so um let's use ub codes yep i'm just still going to use ub codes um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in the name that we're going to call it so that whenever it's populated it's just going to automatically you know also render there so i most likely call this tutorial tutorial okay input youtube and let me not forget this all right cms block YouTube. okay so i'll get to create an account so this is the free versions the um this is the pricing and pro and whatever well we're just going to make use of the full of the free one just for public. so let's create the account so most likely i'll be sent um something like a confirmation link so i sort of don't have the one like they don't have the one i want to use so we can just click on custom and um, we're making use of react so i'll pull react right we're making a react right so that's like next sort of so we get so it gets your code here so technically we're going to follow these procedures so let's um let's install this so let's just go back to our stuff yeah CMS. so let's go back here and let's let's open let's open a new terminal let's cd into that so we're going to cd into front end let's install and let's let's go back and see what's next so while that is happening let's in our components folder let's create a new folder called comments tsx or oh, i prefer comments Let's use our REFC. Okay. Okay. So we're going to save that up. So as you can see, that our comment was just before we go with this, our comment was just right below. Yes. So um, let's try to style that up. I'm going to paste in the components. Right so um this would be in our slug pages for both our programming and our mental health so i'm going to um so i'm going to head over and try that now if it come to see if it come around check it see that's the link reply it's just down here so let's go back and let's actually import it here and so we're just going to import comments from so yeah let's go ahead and import comments Oh no no! It ought to show. All right, so we can just go over here and so just can just go over here and then paste it just down beneath here. So let me try and see so we're not confused what we're doing. Okay, so it's down below here. Yeah? We can create and post it just right there. So I create a div here. Yeah? 
and then we're going to write our comments okay so we save that up it's the same thing here so just like put this like this technically this is for this up and just right here you can create another div and you can write comments in the way yet to import it just go back up and import it Let's just save that and we're going to check it. That should make sense. All right, let's open up a post. I think, okay, we have one. You can see that we have comments here. You can go back here and see that we have the comments here. All right. I think that's calm. So let's head back to our comments and let's, let's do some things. So let's go back to our comments and we're going to work on this. So let's make use of our use client component. Let's use client. All right. So I've done this. So let's go ahead and follow the diagram the there. So we've installed it. So what we need to do is let's do what they've said. So I'm going to take this and we're going to put it in our code. Just that will just be my minute here. I'm gonna take um go back and um this is how we're going to implement it. So I think that they'll give they'll give you'll be giving your own unique code, so yours might not be what is in mine. So maybe don't try using mine. All right, so let's go here and let's paste it up. So I'm gonna paste it just right here. So um before I do this, let's just do it like this. Um read a div and let's play it. Yeah. So if we save that all, we'll be able to see it here. Yeah. Oh yeah, so we can see it here. So you notice that what's here is that we have leave a reply. So let's start the leave a reply side. So I'm just going to put a class name here and um we'll give it a background of let me see, it should be white right. Okay, this is white. So give you a background of white and shadow OG and rounded to the LG and a padding it a padding bottom 12 margin bottom eight as one is three and what should I give a reply right and let's do a class name of text Excel and be margin bottom eight on semi bold and border the border button as that's like that one that looks like each other and padding button before okay. so if we save that up we shall have something that looks like this and this let's go back here and yeah so when you try to comment now um we should also see that reflecting our program yay so when you try to comment now um let's see um that's deep i'll let go of the path that's deep oh let's go of the past okay so you can make it's really nice you can make it bold you can make it italic um you can try to um here is something else i make one on the line um what's that let's make one stripe true and let's put um try we'll do that in our other one so let's try and submit reply so you know how the process works so chances that you would okay so when another person i'll probably try to log in with another account that's probably when we deploy it oh i could try that now but basically like the one i did before you can use an account and it's it's all really nice um another person can you, you can see that you can also reply to this 
what's what's up you can reply to this and you get a notification that this person actually replied to you so it's really really nice it's um i find it useful perhaps till you exhaust your chance and uh, what i'll try is let's try something i'm going to try to actually open this in another account okay let me use this one uh let me use this one so i'm gonna try and do this in another account and let's see if it, if it changes anything but i think it's more useful when by the time you deploy it so either i just read your article love it so let's try this all right so you can add images you can add and i don't even have any image i could use here um oh no i don't okay i should be able to get one here okay let's add in let's add an image here let's add this okay so we can add an image um okay okay they're asking me for if i have an account for email verification so i will just put my email like the email i'm using here oh, you know what let me use this which one should i use i'm just going to use another email and i'm going to put um add someone okay so um i'm going to submit this so my command has been added so all i just did was create an account so i could let's go back here to where we are and we're going to see that the comment is actually going to show so i'm just going to remove this so you can see the comment and even the image so i can apply to this as um i am glad you liked it and I could put I could put something there and then you can submit reply and if we go back to where the account we used we can see that oh something's oh and we can see we can see you come here and click to show so it's really interactive all right so it's really so it's really interactive all right so why this person's <laughs> all right so i think we're almost done or we're done yeah we're done see you have notifications so it's a really cool functionality all right and we can do the same thing in our programming you know we can let's try and make a comment just here and let's try and make a comment let's click on this um I'm really getting to like debugging. How about you? Let's try out this code. Okay. Um, okay, let's put npm start. Yeah. Let's put this into a code block and let's post. So we can see the code here. I don't know if there's any difference, it's also obvious. And we can go back to where we were and um, check out that post. And we we'll come back to check out that post. It was this right. And we can see all oh, someone that someone already posted. Uh, I don't have the energy for this. I'm just going to skip it for now. And we can also reply. So it's the same thing. It's 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 really the same thing so really have fun around it that's a really easy way to go with it so um i'm i'm to check are we done are we done what else is left to be done mm, do you guys get are we done what else is done i think we've done everything yep we've done everything let's be sure we've done recent programming post mental health. okay let's look at the main stuff that we did so we're not missing out on anything so we've done a recent programming okay let's add one more let's just add one more programming post and then we can really call it a, a day 
All right, so I'm going to try and add one more programming post right here. So let's do let's do final test before deploying. So just go back and let's create a go to our programming. Let's create one. Let's just put this here. Um, let's put this here. We can auto generate the slug. We can find a new image and just put it here. Just anyone. Okay, and let's put in some random contents. Okay, stops. So, yeah, stop. So, like, stop. So, this one was. So, I could just come here and put stops. So, hope you guys like the video. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Just make this board underlined. Like you could add an image to your posts, really, in case you didn't know about that. You could add an image. Let's try and add this. It's going to show you programming image, whatever I want to put. All right, just close that up and then we can just deploy it. All right, so let's start setting up our GitHub so we can push our code and deploy our site. All right, so I really want to be sure we're not forgetting anything because once I'm done with here, I'm done, I'm done with it. It's been, it's been, it's been, it's been quite long. Okay, so let's try reloading this. I'm going to actually try and add one more, one more post. So I'm, I want to try and point a view. Or point out something so let's go back here okay let's give it a few so let's try and add one more okay let's try and add one more to our mental level post i see that this post here is going to be gone because we set it to an array of zero to three so like it's only going to show the four recent posts so since this one is now amongst the top four it's going to be gone so let's go to our mental help post and then just quickly add one more post to show you um how it is it's so bright here add let's check this out so um i'm gonna copy that come back here i'm gonna just try and add one so yeah we just, we're, just, we're gonna make it like five so i'm just gonna put it here try and generate this log let's add back and copy this so you can just put any random thing so i'm just trying to show you how it works um upload or can we use upload let's still use the banner um let's try and put in something that's from here you can see you can make you can like you can see that this is you can make it various editing it's just really rich text and it's going to all render well then um when you it's fun really so let me publish this and while we do this let's open our github and let's open our cell so for github i'm just going to create a new repository and um sorry and yeah, I'm going to call it CMS blog YouTube tutorial. All right. Okay, let's do sanity. So, because I might do all that couple of all that. Okay. So, this tutorial is for the YouTube sanity tutorial. So it's going to be public and we can just create the repository. All right. So we're also going to deploy our content at Sanity. So I think um, it's usually Sanity deploy, but I really want to come far from the um, deploying <laughs> Sanity. Okay. There's really, so you can set it up. Yeah, Sanity deploy. So we're just going to use um, MPX Sanity deploy or just Sanity deploy and it should work so and we could give it a name so that way can, you see this is already deployed this is not running on any local host already deployed so open vercel and sign sign up for vercel um the sign up process is really easy so i'm going to use my github i i would advise you to use your github because you're sort of going to be um deploying it from your github so um before we try and add a new project 
um let's just try and actually um okay before we do everything let's ensure that let's reload this and try to check what's happening here all right so the new page okay we can see that the recent one we just added we added something new so it's all so there so we can go to programming And you can see, yeah, you can see that it's all showing now, and that's great. That's you can see it's all showing. I mean, you can see that the one that we added has also gone. So that's so it's showing actually showing your recent post, your top four recent posts. So feel feel free to style up any way and any how you want it. All right, just explore around the code and let's actually deploy. All right, let's start with deploying our Sanity Studio. So that won't take up much time. So I'll just probably end my servers now. And with Ctrl C, I'll end my servers. Right here to Ctrl C, I'll end my server. So we can just clear this and I can come back here and just clear this up. So this, I'm just going to see this is ensure you're in a directory for your um for your sanity. And to, to go about that, you can just do CD into the name here. Yeah. So right here, I'm already inside, as you can see. So I'm just going to do, um, so let's try something to deploy if it works. If it doesn't work, then okay. So let's do MPX and to deploy then. Okay. All right. So you see, um, host name. So I'm going to do CMS blog. Okay, let's do Sanity CMS blog tutorial YouTube. All right, so that's our host name, and so it's building your Sanity Studio, and then let's give it some time. That's a lot of time to take it. All right, so you can just click and open this link. So let's open it. Um, you can also copy it and keep it somewhere. So your Sanity Studio has been deployed and you can give this and give it to your clients. And even when you push from here, it's going to render on your page, right? So there's few free around that. So next up, let's deploy our front end okay so i'm just gonna start with git and it git add and just do this all those stuffs okay i'm just gonna copy that so let's go back to our front end you can see we're in our front end file i'm just going to do git in it all right and see how that's happening but what i would do now oh no <laughs> okay i want to deploy both okay so i will just open a new this thing and let's try that out. So give in it. Alright, so we get everything. So we're going to git add. Alright. We commit and first commit. So okay, we want both to be committed really. So it says, um, so use git add to include in what to be committed. All right, so yeah, git add, um, want to commit both, that's why. So let, let's go let's go into our front end then and let's do a git add which you already did all right so we're able to put the git commit and end it
and let's go back here and do the same thing I think we already did one here okay so that's in our other photos so git add you okay, already git add git commit sanity and then we, we can push this right mm -hmm. Alright, so let's go, let's go ahead and check that in our GitHub. I feel like I made some mistakes, but let's try that out. You know, correct reference, correct. Alright, so we have we have this already here. Alright, so let's go to our let's go to our Vercel. So we can come over to Vercel. And then we can add new. And let's add uh let's add our project. And then we can click on this, you can see that it's been edited. So let's put on that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put it as a name that we use it for because I want it to populate to that this URL. So we did it at uh okay, okay, this is, oh god. What was that we use it we saved it as because if you change it you would have so um if you if per eventual you want to change your name, there's actually you can just go to the settings. I think should be down. Um for the settings so provincial if you even if you change the url you can change it up here in the settings oh god where is it where is it um it's, it's really fast it's really easy so i'm just going to click on their logo and just try to get the settings <sighs> if you find settings i don't know it's not a live stuff oh, okay Let's go to that main page. Okay. Okay, let's go to my account then. First comment. Come on, let's go to my account. Yep, we can get to domain. So let's go on domains. Uh, okay, I can see what domain I used. So this is domain I used, right? So I can just copy that and put it in my Vercel. So it would, you know, redirect, it would come here. So we do, may not have to put the rest of the app, we can just put it here and let's deploy. Uh, actually, I forgot before we deploy, you have, you, you should build more. I think I'm I sort of skipped my mind, but yeah, it's just npm build to just ensure there are no errors before you are pushing it out. So, all the source code would be available. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe if you watch the video so far. If you've able to come so far, well done, well done, well done. So yes, so we're just going to wait for this to load. And we can be done, you know, we're done. So yes, we see that it's been deployed. You see that it's been deployed. And we can really open it up and see how it's, how it's faring. So really feel free to add more content, feel free to explore it. Just really have fun around everything, have fun around everything, have fun around everything, okay? So that's that. So till next time, you guys should have a great day. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. I believe that you've been able to learn a lot, okay? So okay we forgot this but thank you for subscribing thank you for liking this thank you for watching it this far till next time stay tuned i say chase your dreams man do that thing man that keeps you up at night that thing that bothers you man that makes you trip you can't quit thinking about it you always 